assignment was commissioned to the servant and prisoner of our Lord Jesus Christ, Apostle T.F. Chuenga. The assignment has seen the birth of many children to the Lord. It has been an instrument for the transformation of many lives through the preaching of the word. Through this assignment, many have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and have been translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. The dearth and thirst of righteousness that was on the face of the earth is being quenched by the undiluted gospel of Jesus Christ, which is being preached through the apostolic assignment bestowed upon the prisoner of Christ. Believers, when we reflect and take a look at where this gospel took us, we are convinced that indeed this assignment has changed every one of us in an amazing manner. In light of this, we are calling for those with testimonies of how they have been transformed by the Word of God, preached by the Apostle, to record video testimonies. The video should have a maximum length of 90 seconds. It should be recorded with the camera on landscape mode. Send your testimonies to testimonies at jrm.org.zw. If, if you are not um, careful, you blame the devil for everything. 
When you fail to pay school fees for your children, you say it's the devil. <laughs> so when we have network challenges, we are mindful that we cannot blame the devil. Yes. Those are our own problems. Some of our problems are based on national problems that are beyond our capabilities. Yes. You see, you, you may want to buy a car that has a very low clearance. And when you are told it can't drive on your roads, you can't blame the devil. You have to know what you have contributed <coughs> to the problems you are facing. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage our believers not to be religious because what we have is not a religion. We have a kingdom. So we know the truth. We don't deal with the facts. <coughs> we deal with the truth. Facts and the truth are two different things. Yes. Facts is what appears on the ground. The truth is what God says. <laughs> so those are two different things. Yes. Yes. My facts is you know There are so many times when facts contradict with the truth. Yes. When such happens, we will submit ourselves to the truth and ignore the facts. Yes. Even when they are so compelling and convincing. <laughs> So this is a network challenge which we hope with the efforts we are putting in very soon we shall find um, a reprieve. Even when you do the best you think you have done to avoid this problem, yes. it will still come. Yes. Because we have a very big infrastructural challenge. Yes. Coming back to what we were teaching and learning. Remember, we are doing a Bible study. It's a message, but yes. we shall be discussing the three of us. We are not going to admit believers to join this discussion. We have already lost an hour because of this network challenge. So, a reminder to you, brethren, the message is titled the John series part 3G subtitled concluding yes. John the Baptist so pastor remember we were saying we are going to be tying loose ends we are going to be tying the knots we are going to be putting any hem on the garment that we were suing from the day we started to, to focus on John the Baptist's ministry. Yes. So we discovered, um, among other things, that John is a special preacher in the eyes of God. Yes. Preachers are all special, but among the special, there is someone or some others who are more special than others. Yes. And some may want to dispute this. But the truth is, when it comes to service to God, God's servants are not equal. The servant of God is measured by God. Yes. And how God compares you with some of his servants will always cause you to realize that there are other servants who have received a superior assignment yes. to yours. And there are other servants who have received a, an inferior assignment to your assignment. And that means we are all important to God, yes. but the value, the level, the degree, the magnitude of importance 
it differs. Yes. So last time we talked about the, the idea that we don't give ourselves greatness. Yes. I cannot start to say I am the great one. That will be foolishness. Brother Nelson, you yes. want to give us a scripture. We, we won't. You, you have to remember them. Yes. If you can't remember it, I will punish you. <laughs> give me the scripture which we shared. One, we, we showed them scriptures in which it was described as foolishness for one to give himself greatness. Yes. If I start to say I'm great one, the Bible <laughs> says it's foolishness. Yes. <laughs> right. In Nigeria, they use a <coughs> proverb which says, your eyes have seen your ears. <laughs> it's an expression that simply means you, you are not, no longer sane. Yes. Because that will never happen. Yes. These eyes can never see these ears. When you start to claim that your eyes can uh -huh. see your ears, <laughs> you have lost your mental balance. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, yes. I can give you the scriptures. Yes, now. yes, give me the scripture. <laughs> yes, uh, we can uh, compare uh, the book of Second uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. Second um, Corinthians chapter 12. Yes. Are you sure, brother? I am sure. <laughs> let's, let's look at it. <laughs> yes, we'll compare it with uh, John chapter 3, verse 27 as well. Which All says, right. uh, no man uh, receiveth anything out of God. Oh, okay. I wanted you to give me a scripture that says we, we are not allowed to compare ourselves. Oh, okay. okay. If okay. the moment you start to yes. say, I'm great, you become a fool. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's Second uh, Corinthians chapter ten, verse twelve. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Pastor will determine whether we should punish you for the earlier mistake. <laughs> Let's read it. For we do not, we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. If you are not wise, it yes. simply means you are a fool. Yes. You get it? There are no wise fools in this world. Yes. So, according to this scripture, you can't just wake up one day and say, I am the greatest pastor on earth. Yes. Or I am the greatest pastor in the country. Yes. You are not allowed to say that. Yes. Greatness is not self-acclaimed yes. or self-established. Yes. great. great 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 Anzangar mepo. Without try kuzita great, it's unwise. The second scripture, brethren, there are others who are not there. It's Galatians six verse three. Galatians chapter six verse number three. If, a, if man, a man, yes. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Yes. For if a man think himself to be something, yes. when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Yes. So the greatness of John was not claimed by John. John is great. And this is not what John said. Yes. Lest people would say, how do you know if John was still correct? Maybe John became proud and arrogant in the process of his assignment. Yes. There is no verse in the Bible in which John ever claimed to be great. Yes. But the, 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 the man, John the Baptist, he said a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. That's verse 27, right? Yes. Of John chapter 3. They came to John in verse 25 and 26. They told John, 
that Jesus had now uh, become more prominent than he was. Yes. And John answered them in verse 27. Let's yes. see what he said. Yes. Uh, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Yes. So John received greatness. The greatness of John was given to him from heaven. Yes. Is John great? No, John is not just great. John was the greatest. John still is the greatest. Yes. Let's look at where we find that evidence. Matthew 11, verse 11. Yes. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there is not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. If there is no prophet greater than John, yes. it means John is the greatest. Those yes. who have studied comparatives and superlatives, you realize that if something is good, it is inferior to something that is better. Yes. But what is better is inferior to what is best. Yes. And if something is best, it means there is nothing better than the best. Yes. yes. So there is no greater prophet than John. Yes. yes. And, and that means John is the greatest. Greatest of all that are born of women. Yes. Jesus was very clear. He was comparing John with those that are born of women. Yes. The moment you realize that on your birth certificate, there is a name of a mother. You are inferior to John. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. Yes. How great you think you have become. Yes. Kanataka Tarisa Kushanjira Mungari. Ukango Zaru wa nemu kazichet. Watom diki kuna Joan. Yes. <laughs> the good thing about it is it is not John saying it. Yes. It's Jesus who came down from heaven. Yes. So the greatness that we are talking about, which is of John, we are hearing of John's greatness from Jesus who came down from heaven. Yes. Which means this greatness was granted to John yes. from heaven. Jesus is the one who was talking in Matthew 11. He is John's master. Yes. So you can't receive greatness from a stranger if you are a servant. Yes. Only your master can grant you that greatness. So today we are summing up. And as usual, we will realize some things which we have never learned before. Yes. Those who want to confirm the greatness of John, you can also read Luke 7, verse 28. Um, the Lord was also quoted by Luke there as saying, yes. there is no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Yes. And last time we said, whether you want to define these two scriptures literally or spiritually, yes. John remains the greatest. Yes. Whether you say, well, Jesus said those that are born of women, John was talking of those that are born of physical women. He remains the greatest. Yes. If you want to define <coughs> spiritual women, John <laughs> remains the greatest. Yes. So you can't sneak yourself ahead of John. Yes. Matauri was wakaita pane antivirus. Yes. If Jesus had said of all the Old Testament prophets, yes. John is the greatest, then the New Testament prophets would be exempt. <laughs> but the word women, it means more than one woman. Yes. And yes. as we all know, the woman that we see mentioned in the Bible is a picture of the church. Women represent the church. Yes. And there are only two churches in the Bible. There is the Old Testament church and the New Testament church. Yes. So according to what the Lord said in Luke 7, 28, Matthew 11, 11, all that are born of these two women, yes. there is not a one greater than John. 
Apostle Chuengwa is born of the New Testament woman. The New Testament church. Paul was a New Testament child. John is greater than us. So John is greater than me. John the Baptist is greater than me. Tikato sangana John toto msaluta toto timdara tima shefa acho. Kana chuku bo waizo zozo. The down or rara. Nobody buys a rare seed, and there are more zi. Yes. Saga tens the anet simbare kukuru the kupromota chorwano da. Yes. Abuns we go to come promota Johni in da. So we have done a lot of work in proving through so many scenarios that John is the greatest. Last time when we did the eunuch two messages, we saw that John was born a eunuch. Yes. And according to 1 Corinthians 7, what verse is that? Verse 7. Yes. You, are, you can't be born a woman, a, 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 a eunuch, sorry. You can't be born a eunuch. Yes. A if gift. it is not a gift from God. Yes. Which means John <laughs> received a gift, and that gift of a eunuch is a gift from God. Yes. Those who learned about a eunuch, just think about it. If you would receive a knock or on your door and you, you ask who is this, and the man outside says, it's, I'm a DHL delivery man. I have a parcel from you. And when you open the parcel, you receive, it's, you realize it's a gift. And you open the wrapping of the parcel, you realize the gift is called eunuch. Would you celebrate such a gift? <laughs> a eunuch is an important man. A eunuch is a humiliated man. A eunuch is a man that is uh, 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 um, looked down upon because he is tamed and ridiculed by his society as less of a man. Yes but is honored, of course, by the king because he's a palace servant who works in proximity to the queen. Chipo wa hi chakadaro chunonzi huyunaki. Yes. Kanavava noti ndine chipo wa ungadere kugamchila chipo chakadai che huyunaki. Chipo swa mwari muno ziziwe ereimi. Vaeva noti mwari ndipe iwo chipo. <laughs> Ukada kupi wache uyuna kuno tambire ere. <laughs> Kana paya pamuni imba zanda piwa na mwari andira ambe pa. Uyuna kuno karo kira gomo kati babado ndi chinjira. <laughs> but today we started by looking at something that proves that John is more special than every other servant of God that we have. Of course, in both scriptures, the Lord remained greater than John, even though at some point he became a little lower than angels. That's why he gave that disclaimer when he said, uh, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Jesus was mentioning himself there. He was the least in the kingdom of heaven at that time because he had become a little lower than the angels, yes. according to Psalm 8, 4 to 6. But let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse number 13. And remember, I'm trying to show you that everyone here on earth, they received a name from their parents. Mm -hmm. Those who, gave, who, who were given names by God, they were given new names, yes. which means they once held or used names which they were given by their own natural biological parents or yes. guardians. Yes. <coughs> In the case of Saul of Tarsus, God gave him a new name. He was renamed to Paul. If you read John chapter 1, Peter was given a name, Peter, by the Lord. Yes. But earlier on, his name was Simon. They saw the same happened to Abraham, who in Genesis 17, he was renamed to Abraham, or Jacob, who was renamed to Israel. Yes. 
But John did not receive, receive a new name from God. John received a name before he was born. Yes. Luke chapter 1 verse 13. And we are going to compare that with our Lord Jesus Christ because other than John, the other person who got a name from God at birth, only person is John, is Jesus Christ. Yes. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. Zachariah was John's father. For thy prayer is heard. Yes. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. All right. <laughs> thou shalt call his name John. John yes. So at this point, brethren, John was not yet born. Zachariah had not yet gone back home to be intimate with his wife. Yes. Elizabeth, John's mother, was not yet pregnant. Yes. <laughs> so how many do we have on this earth who received names at this particular name? At particular time, sorry. Yes. So let's read Luke 1, verse 57. Yes. Yes. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. Elizabeth, John's mother, gave birth to this son. Yes. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called his name Zacharias after the name of his father. So John was almost named by men. <laughs> they said, well, let's give him his father's name. So the women, <laughs> the women, they took, they took the responsibility to name the boy. Yes. They said, well, young man, <laughs> your name is Zacharias. Zacharias. <laughs> Zacharias. <laughs> Son of my sorrow. Yes. Benjamin. Yes. Yes. It is by Genesis 35 from verse 11. Yes. But let's come, let's, let's see. So this John we are talking about, he actually had received a name earlier on. Yes. Zachariah. <laughs> yes. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. Yes. And they said unto her, There is none of, that, of thy kindred that is called by this name. So according to the Jewish traditions, a child cannot receive a name yes. that has never been held by another person <laughs> in their lineage. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, the family of Zacharias concluded this child shall be called Zachariah. Yes. But Elizabeth said, no. This child shall be called John. Yes. <laughs> the family said, no. There is no one in this family who ever, who, who, who ever got this name. Yes. It's a strange name. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's see how this name dispute was resolved. Yes. And they made signs to his father. How he should have him called. They made signs to his father. How he should have him called. Zachariah at that time was not talking. Yes. <laughs> so they were now using sign language to communicate with Zachariah. Yes. And they asked him, Papa, I don't know how they use their <laughs> signs. What name shall we give this child? Yes. Let's see how it was resolved. Yes. And they made signs to his father how he should have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. So John, John was, was written down. Yes. <laughs> the word Zachariah was spoken by mouth. But when Zachariah 
wanted to confirm the name John. John Zachariah said, since I'm not talking, give me a pen and a paper. Yes. And Zachariah wrote John. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they marveled. They, yes. They marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. Now let's end there. Yes. I just wanted us to confirm something that we had not spoken about in the earlier messages. Yes. The name of John, it means the loved one of God. Yes. Who gave John this name? It was not Zachariah. It was not Elizabeth, his mother. Yes. It was God. Because the Bible in verse 13 says, The angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, yes. for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, yes. and thou shalt call his name John. Yes. <laughs> so John is a name given to him from heaven, yeah. delivered by an angel. Who among us has such a name? <laughs> Let's talk about Samson, who was nearly closer to John's circumstances. <laughs> An angel came to Manoah in Judges 13 yes. and his wife. And the angel spoke about Samson. But yes. let's see if the circumstances of Samson's birth can be a, a identical yes. with the circumstances of John's birth. Yes. Let's look at how the angel spoke to Manoah's wife. Yes. Verse number three. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor a strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the end of the Philistines. Let's end there. We don't need <laughs> to look into the rest of the story lest we get lost. Yes. Um, there are similarities you always find similarities in different matters yes. of Bible narratives. Yes. The angel said Samson was going to be a Nazarite yes. unto God from the womb. Yes. But the angel never said he shall have Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Yes. Neither did the angel give these two the name of this of this uh, of this child. Yes. So the name Samson was not given to this child by the angel. Verse number 24. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. Mm -hmm. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. Yes. The name Samson was given to him by his mother. Yes. And not by God. Yes. The only person who was born with a name already given into the world of him, already in the custody of his parents. Yes. It is Jesus. Yes. Let's look at the same scripture. Luke chapter 1. Yes. Verse number 30 and 31. Yes. And the angel said unto her, yes. Fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Mary, you have found favor with God. Who was speaking to Mary? It's the angel. It's the angel? The yes. same angel. Yes. Not just the same dimension of an angel, but the very same angel. Yes. Yes. The angel who brought John's name is the same angel who brought our Lord's name into this world. Yes. Kurewa kutipana ingirozi one. Yakaburu kakudenga. Hii ni mazitama viri. Six months ago, yaka wanezi tara John. Six months later, yaka wanezi tara Raishori Jesu Christ. Yes. 
Asa jambo hiti kwa hizo. <laughs> Kana tika gata kuona isha jiri. Joe nari great. Yes. Isuzu tiruguti isuzu. Isha jaga tauro Joe nari greatest. <laughs> Icho kwa di re. <laughs> Shino ba tere kuko fanpo jiri. Joe is the greatest. He was in Gazilo kuti is the greatest in what way? Yes. What is the evidence? in John's real life yes that proves that what our lord said about him is true yes is it true is it true that John is the greatest servant of Jesus Christ yes. so we are not comparing John with Jesus Christ yes because John is a servant <coughs> yes and according to to Hebrews 3 yes um, a, a servant cannot be he cannot compete with his master yes let's not read it yes Verse 30, again, Luke chapter 1. And the angel said unto her, yes. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Mary found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Yes. And bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. You shall call his name Jesus. Yes. Unlike in the Judges 13, Manoah case, an angel came and spoke about the birth of a son. Yes. But the angel did not say the name of that son. In the case of our Lord's birth, the angel spoke to Mary, yes. you shall be a son. Yes. And the angel gave the name <laughs> of that son. Yes. You shall call his name Jesus. And that's what happened to John. We yes. read Luke one thirteen, the same chapter. Yes. Luke chapter 2, verse 21. Yes. Luke chapter 2 verse 21. And when and when 8 days were accomplished you see for now the circumcising of the child. You remember <laughs> the 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 Luke chapter 1 yes, the Luke chapter 1 verse one. No, verse 57. Okay. Okay? Yes. It's it's verse 59. Yes. And it it, it was the custom of Israel to name a child eight days after his birth. Yes, yes. But maybe let's start by reading Luke 2, verse 21. Because in Luke 1, 31, the angel gave Mary his name. Yes. You are going to be pregnant. Yes. You are going to give birth to a son. And the name of that son is Jesus. Yes. So Mary received Jesus' name. Before Mary got pregnant, the same way John's name was handed over to Zachariah before Elizabeth was pregnant. Yes. Now Jesus was born. It is now eight days since he was born. Yes. Let's see what verse 21 of Luke 2 says. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Bingo! Kuno zonzi kupari za pakungo titiruko zidu zira cheti. Tishibata niza, chisona niza. Yes. Was mna anoso na embeka, haka zire manchira, anu kupata niza mapisi. Yes. Oburiza dres. Yes. Iwoka puwa jire loro, apana cha wano oburiza. Yes. Dosa kwa mashitibu, wana inda kushopu kuno tenga embe, asima shope manchira wa chasia. Yes. Varu kuchaka skill, yoku batani za jira, ne kuchinja jira kurita dress. Yes. Kana kuchinja jira kurita bachke. Kana kuchinja jira kurita mudebe. Yes. We are not here to establish something new. What we are saying is clearly stated in scripture. Yes. Why then are we here? To interpret yes. the scriptures. So the name was given to this woman before the child was conceived in the womb. That's how the name came. Yes. And this is what we had already read in Luke chapter 159, up to verse number 63. Yes. John was named exactly eight days after he was born. Yes. But because his mother was not the one with the power to name the child, they had to resort back to Zachariah. Yes. Because the name was not delivered to Elizabeth by the angel. Yes. The name was delivered to Zachariah. But it appears Zachariah had already told his wife about this name. Yes. Because Zachariah, in his absence, 
Elizabeth was already arguing with Zachariah's family. Yes. As to what name to give to this child. So this is something we had not spoken about before. Yes. It proves that John is the greatest. Yes. Even at, at, at when we look at the manner of his birth, focusing on his name. Yes. Are you understanding this, brethren? Yes. When we look at this again, we see another miracle. John is a miracle child. Yes. It was impossible under natural circumstances for John to be born because his father and his mother were well stricken in years. Yes. And just like Sarah, the womb of Elizabeth had died a long time ago. Yes. That's why it needed an angel yes. to come for Elizabeth to conceive. Yes. When Mary hears about the news of a pregnancy, a question in verse 34 was, how can this happen yes. seeing I don't know a man? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the angel explained to Mary. Yes. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the eyes shall overshadow you. Yes. So, they are both miracle children. Yes. Jesus, our Lord, and John the Baptist. Yes. John the Baptist is a miracle child. Yes. He was born under an impossible situation. Just like Isaac, yes. the son of Sarah and Abraham, born to them in their well-advanced age. Yes. The difference between John and Isaac was that Isaac was just a child born to a normal family, whereas John was born to the high priest, who had executive duties in the order of divine service of the Beit Amikdash, he burned incense in the Kodesh, and he also yes. performed special rituals on the Day of Atonement yes. to atone for the sins of the whole nation of Israel. Yes. That's why John's birth was not a special miracle to an ordinary family. Mm -hmm. It was a miracle to the whole nation of Israel. Yes. Because the barrenness of a high priest was a national crisis. But the barrenness of, of Sarah was not a national crisis. Yes. In the event of Zachariah's death, who was going to bring continuity as far as the lineage of Zachariah was concerned in the performance of priestly duties? Yes. The birth of, of John brought joy to the whole nation. Yes. Because the whole nation sighed with relief. At least if the high priest dies, yes. we are going to have someone to stand before God to plead for our sins. Yes. And that is what <coughs> the angel said to Zechariah in Luke chapter 1, verse number... 14, and thou and shalt God. have joy and gladness, yes. and many shall rejoice at his birth. Yes. The fact that John's life took a different trajectory other than bringing continuity in the priestly duties is another matter. Yes. But the birth of John was a national solution to a national problem. Yes. And that makes him similar in mission to our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Both in terms of the nature of their births and as well as the meaning of their assignments to the salvation of mankind. Yes. So John is by all counts a miracle child. <laughs> and there is no other miracle child who compares with John in the whole world. Yes. Apart from the superiority of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ as a master 
to John yes. who was his forerunner. Yes. Maso now. Yes. Hakuna yeah. muna haka mboi tisa baba wake bofu kuta ay, chimumu mkuta azaru. Yes. Hakuna mga na haka mbonzi baba wake waka ita nine months vasinga tauri kutia azaru. <laughs> Only John caused his father to be dumb for nine months yes. until he was born. <laughs> Those are matters. Yes. But last time we looked at what they said about John. In, yes. in, Luke, in Matthew 11, verse 18, yeah. we saw that unlike our Lord who praised John, yes. who commended John, who spoke about John with a lot of excitement yes. and with a lot of honor, a master honoring his own servant, yes. the world around which John lived they saw a different uh, 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 personality in John. Yes. They saw a man who was running a mental. They saw a man who was vexed by a demon. Yes. Let's read it. Yes. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he is a devil. <laughs> now, who was they, Pastor Baloy? Who was they? When the Lord said they, who was he talking about? Vainzi vakati ane dimoni. Dava nan, mungade kupindira mvunzo. Well, I think he was talking to how the people of Israel, the Jews, reacted to John Sassani. Israel. Thank you. That was right. Israel. When the Lord said, they said, he had the, he had the devil. Yes. The word they there, let's highlight it. It refers to the nation of Israel. Yes. So God brought a prophet. And when Jesus started his ministry, in verse 11 of Matthew 11, Mm -hmm. Jesus, the Son of God, the one who came down from heaven, yes. he spoke about John, and he said, Verily I say unto you, among them that yes. are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Yes. So when heaven looks at John, he is the greatest among men. Yes. Excluding Jesus. Yes. John is the greatest. But when you look at Matthew chapter 11 verse 18. The nation. John's brothers and sisters. John's own countrymen. When they looked at him. They said he is demonic. Yes. In Shona Tenenget Shitivaiti. Anema demoni. Yes. Ane ngwendere. <laughs> ane tukunodaro. <laughs> ano rasika njigere. Ano tanda bozo. Yes. Hakuna muna akadai. Yes. Ane wani nguo. <laughs> ya ano feka everyday. Ano nzi munu msinu munu mpenyu munu mkwa munu kwa mm -hmm. So we are going to look a little bit at this scenario so that we can ground ourselves in our dedication to the Lord. Yes. The world we live in, it's a world that is a system that is corrupt. What the world says, it is right. It is always wrong when God reacts to it. What the world says is correct, it is wrong. What the world tells, what the world says is truth, it is falsehoods. 
-hmm. when looked at by God. Yes. Those things that are that are regarded, those things that are sought after, those things that are craved for, those things that the people are yearning to do, to achieve, to acquire, to, to familiarize themselves with things that are purportedly of great value. They are the things that are of no value to God. Yes. Yes. So there is always this contest. We shall always be found in this contest. Yes. We are in the midst of this contest. I want to, to help. We know some people don't find these things easily distinguishable. The difference between the word context and contest. Mm -hmm. The word context, it means under the, the, these, these, these circumstances. Yes. But the word contest, it means a fight. Yes. It means a battle. Yes. The pronunciation is seemingly the same, but their meanings are there is a wide uh, 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 rift apart in yes. terms of what they mean. So I'm saying there is a contest, not context. Yes. Contest with an ST, yes. not with an XT. Yes. There is a battle between the value system of the world yes. and the value system of God. Yes. Perhaps we can look at three scriptures that may help us maybe to understand that. The people who are said to be wise in this world, they are fools before God. Yes. The things that are of great value in this world, they are worthless before God. Yes. The things that appear good and true, they are evil, wicked, and full of hypocrisy and deceit mm -hmm. in the eyes of God. Yes. Why is this contest in existence? The answer is simple. We live in a corrupted world. Yes. This world was not corrupted by you. You are simply adding on and maintaining the corruptibility of this world. Yes. You are a maintenance officer. <laughs> you are not the one who corrupted this world. This world was corrupted in the Garden of Eden. Yes. From that day onwards, the world is spiraling downwards. The world is plummeting to abysmal levels of corruption. So, how does a believer survive with such a robust contest? If you want to, to be accepted, then you have to conform to the standards of this world. You have to go into things that the world is going to say, well, well done. You are right. This is wonderful. You have achieved something. This is beautiful. So the world will accommodate you if you conform to its standards. Yes. But when you come to God, when you become best in the eyes of the world, Yes. You will be at your worst in the eyes of God. How do you balance that contest? <laughs> if you say, I'm going to focus on finding and seeking approval before God, from that day onwards, the world will declare you a persona non grata. Yes. And your question shall be, how am I going to survive? <laughs> Everyone who sees me is going to say, look at this lunatic, look at this imbecile, look at this nonsensical man. Controversial, 
Sometimes they will describe you as controversial. Sometimes mm. they will yes. say you are a fool. Yes. Sometimes they will say you have lost in touch with the reality. <laughs> you are delirious or you are delusional or demented. <laughs> My question is, how shall you balance the two? Because when you look at the same chapter, verse 11 says John is the greatest prophet. Verse 18 says John is a demoniac. The difference is who is speaking yes. in both circumstances. Yes. In Matthew 11, it was God who said John is the greatest. Yes. In verse 18, it is men who are saying John is, is, is possessed of a demon. <laughs> Which side would you find it? Reasonably easy to survive on. Is this contest real or is a pigment of Apostle Chwenga's imagination? The value system of the world versus the value system of God. Yes. Let's look at Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. Yes. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Yes. Neither are your ways my ways. Yes. Says the Lord. Yes. <laughs> For as the heavens are higher than the earth. Yes. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yes. <laughs> How different is the value system of the world to the value system of God? God measured the distance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and God said, well, the distance is equal, similar to the distance between the heavens and the earth. Yes. You can't bridge that gap. <laughs> Yes. The ways of God are far away from the ways of men. Yes. Yes. The thoughts of God are very different from the thoughts of men. How different the distance of that difference was measured by God. <laughs> and the answer is, it is the same as the distance between heaven and earth. Yes. When the world says this is extremely good, God will be at the extreme opposite of that. <laughs> the problem is, when you are living in this world, it is easily possible that you would be deceived to want to identify with the ways of men and the thoughts of men for one simple reason. What men say about you you hear it louder yes. than what God says about you. <laughs> Men, when they say you are wicked, you can see them, you can read their comments on Facebook, you can watch their videos, you can hear their voices describing you as wicked. But God, sometimes, the voice of God is a whisper. So you are you are easily woodwinked to try and reason out with the word and say, no, I'm not that wicked. Please, let's sit down. Why are you describing me like this? <laughs> because men, you can see them all around you. You have got their phone numbers. You phone each other. You do video calls. You do this. So what they say about you matters. Imagine if you live in a location where everyone says you are wicked. Imagine two of your neighbors describe you as a satanist. It's going to affect you. If you are not careful, you are going to have a stroke. <laughs> and you are going to be depressed and you are going to be hospitalized. <laughs> and the doctor is going to ask you, what is bothering you? And you say, imagine my neighbors, <laughs> two of them, they call me a satanist. Now, wait, let, let, me, let me help you where we are going. <laughs> it was not two of John's neighbors who called him a demoniac. <laughs> the whole nation. Yes. Against one witness. John, ah, John. I'm John. I could be the Ujeva. I'm going to be the Ujeva. I'm going to be the Ujeva. 
Follow what the Bola got by Jordan. The Bosa Jim Bull. That's racism, that I'm Jordan. I ain't going to see you, Musa. I come to the Susan. How Jordan disregarded what the world said. It's yes. amazing. Pastor, is, is it not amazing? Yeah, it's amazing. First Samuel 16 7. Yes. First Samuel 16 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on the countenance. Or, Read again. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. Samuel almost anointed Eliab, <laughs> yes. Jesus' firstborn son. Because Eliab is an army general. Yes. It looked befitting that he should be the president who, who succeeds Saul. Samuel was holding on to the vial of the horn of oil. He was sent to Bethlehem mm -hmm. to anoint one of Jesus' sons. Yes. When he looked, Samuel at Eliab. <laughs> the Bible is clear. Yes. The man of God made a mistake. Yes. He concluded in his heart. Surely, this one is the man of God. Surely the Lord is anointed. <laughs> That's verse number six, right? Yes. yes. What did he say? Let's read it. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Samuel Chaye. No, that yet. Pastor. I took that up, observe my candy work. I read a confusion, it's all right, the message, Jemari. Trutara Muna, no anointed Amazimam, Bumika Israel. They are going to Zauru, they are going to David. Yes, Unum Guru Amaru. I don't think I afford Angar and Mira go down to food for Gosar or Gagasami. Yes, no vans in Amari and down of the Mambo, Kumagajes. No vavra is also quite as an area. Raga Mira Rakadeso, she has in a summer. <laughs> Samuel was given a spiritual assignment, yes. but he made a natural assessment. Yes. It was befitting because of Eliab's stature that he became the president of Israel yes. after Saul, the son of Kish. Yes. But look at what Samuel said in verse 6. Surely. The Lord's anointed is before him. <laughs> By all standards, this man is qualified to be a president. He has all the degrees. <laughs> he has all the experience. <laughs> he is a war <old> veteran. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the war. He is not a man from nowhere. Samuel looked at his CV and he said, Well, there's nothing that can stop you from <laughs> leading the country. <laughs> the man whom God is, uh, was, is, is anointed. <laughs> yes. The Lord is anointed. Yes. is before him. Yes. God then answers Samuel. Yes. Let's hear what he said in verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Do not look at how Eliab appears. Yes. Don't get concerned about his phys physical stature. Yes. Don't look at his academic papers. Yes. Why? Or on the height of his stature. Doesn't matter he's masculine and he looks like the world will listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> because I have refused him. I have rejected him. Despite yes. him having a, 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 a stature that befits Yes. The person that should fill the office of the president. Yes. I rejected him. Yes. Yes. For the Lord seeth not as men seeth. God does not see <laughs> as many sees. Yes. That's why I cited this scripture, Brother yes. Nelson. Yes. Ma wani roamari. Asiriu and one kwanawanu. Yes. How does God see? For men looketh on the outward appearance. Oh. But the Lord looketh on the heart. Let's end there. Saka Munaka Mira Paisish. Yes. Vanavano on a movie. 
even wakanzi ona isi vira ke chuno jese zvakanyor wapa CV apa apana chino nyor wapa CV chino taura pa msoro pe moyo I don't know those who have written their resumes. <laughs> have you ever written anything about your art? <laughs> you talk about your experience and your passions. I love to work in, in, in a school. I, I care about the sick. Give me this job. I want to be a doctor at this hospital. But you cannot talk about your heart. <laughs> you cannot talk about the purity of your heart. <laughs> in most cases, people will be lying. If they start to talk about that. Yeah. No, not about that. Even yeah. when they say, I have a passion towards patience. They'll be lying. <laughs> They'll be lying. They have yes. a passion towards cash. Yes. Yes. The only place to get that cash is the hospital. <laughs> yes. so, so God rejected Elab. Yes. <laughs> and God was clear. <laughs> he rebuked the prophet. Yes. You have made a mistake. <clears throat> the standard you have used to evaluate this man is not a godly standard. Yes. It's a man standard. Mm. <laughs> yes. the next president Akaita Eliab. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. mistake <laughs> 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 See, Vira Garaganaka, Jacob Votelwa, Elia by Votelwa, is is. She has Namari Moywaka Wakaipa. By telling El, uh, Samuel that God looks at the heart, God was telling Samuel, this man's heart is not right. It's corrupt. It's corrupt. That's why he cannot be the president. Yes. But Samuel had already made his own evaluations. I'm asking you, brethren, how many men do we have today who looked at their women's countenances and concluded, <laughs> surely my wife is before me? Pastor, <laughs> 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 Yeah, but the truth has to be said. It doesn't change. Unotari samunu, what my, 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 my. Uundie mzozi uo mwari. Adorora manguwa na jayi. Kuma noso ni. Noso pesra wangu, zine anjati yako. Kosekuru mnenda kumbarini. Unengu wakashanya, ujitinto zikara manguwana. Weta two months, uri kwa sisi. Would <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When you got married, were you not deceived by your eyes? Like Samuel was deceived. And Samuel spoke within himself. The good thing is, is the one who wrote this book, the book of Samuel, which means God used him to record his own mistake. I made the mistake. Yes. I almost anointed a wrong person. Because I looked at him with a carnal mind and I concluded he is the right candidate to be the president. <laughs> but 
when I made that mistake, God immediately yes. rebuked me. Yes. God immediately corrected me. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to immediately correct you when you are about to make mistakes like Samuel made. Yes. Aba baba singa itwe mistake no correct go after 2 weeks. Seva zato da kwa mziwo yu. Was those to go to anza we see. Ah ah. Unoko zoka kuna. Pana ene ya bono shikudza pa itanga kuti zvidi kuti kuti vanhu vese chindita his excellence. Yes. Kwa to print wa madije dzikama ngwa nacho. Elia for president. The man of God was here. <laughs> and the other question is how much are we willing Pastor Baloy how much are we willing to accept what God says about other people mm. let me say this prophet Samuel one of the greatest prophets in Israel because of his contribution to the building of the nation of Israel. The transition from judges to kings was handled by Samuel. He anointed two prophets, two presidents, two kings in his time. And that is not an ordinary job. But he made a mistake. But Samuel is a prophet. He did not physically understand the, the family dynamics in Jesus' life or in Jesus' house. Samuel did not have prior knowledge yes. of Jesus' family structure. Yes. Samuel did not know Jesus' sons personally, yes. one by one. What happened to Samuel is he made an impromptu analysis yes. and he came <laughs> up with a, 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 an impulse conclusion yes. based on the evidence presented before me. <laughs> Eliab is surely <laughs> the Lord's anointed. Immediately, God said, no, this man's heart is not right. Yes. My question to you, because Samuel, as a servant of God, he was used to rebuking from God. Mm -hmm. So he never fought with God. Yes. No. Immediately he said, no, give me another one, another one, another one. And then David came and David was anointed and Samuel never made it an issue. Yes. It was an, an, an ordinary day in office. Mm -hmm. I will make mistakes as a servant of God mm -hmm. and God will correct me. Yes. I have no issues with that. Yes. But my question is, in your personal life, uh -huh. you are trying to do something with someone. Yes. Maybe it's business. When God says, don't do business with this person, yes. because his heart is not right, yes. how willing are you to ask to allow God to rebuke you, to instruct you, and to let it go without putting up a fight? <clears throat> I remember some year I told some guy, this girl you are dating is not wife material. <laughs> his, uh, his question to me was, what if I, I help her to overcome those weaknesses <coughs> that she has? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Imagine God telling you, you can't, you can't put a crocodile on a yoke to pull your plow. And you are telling God, I will tame it and one day the crocodile would be part of my animals that I use in farming. The one who created the crocodile is telling you, <laughs> this one, it's not tameable. <laughs> Leave it, it will hurt you. And you are telling God, no, I will talk to it. So I get a job, 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 Kure watu marati garu watambi kena. Iwatu kuna mwana no zaidi nita garu kwa michana michana tunori trainer zese zaidi nita zewe zewe kuwa aggressive to kutoka ribad sira. We will talk to it. Samuel could have fought God, and Samuel could have said, Why don't you tell me why Eliab's heart is not right? 
Why can't we preach to him so that he can change his heart? Are you willing to let go if God tells you, leave this one? Are you willing? This boy you are calling your fiancé is not husband material. If God says that, are you willing to immediately let that boy go? Yes. This girl you are dating is not good for your life. Her heart is not right. If God says that, are you willing to immediately let that girl go? Or you are going to start to do prayers? <laughs> do you think you can pray and change God's position? Do you think if Samuel started to pray for God to allow him to anoint Eliab, it was going to work? It wasn't going to work. Let's leave it. Yes. Let's leave it. <laughs> but these are problems. Yes. We are having in our days. We have people who say we love to hear from God. But what they actually mean is we love <coughs> God to ratify what we are already doing. Yes. When God says things they don't want to hear, things that ask or demand them to change the courses of their life, yes. they start to criticize the authenticity of the voice of God. Yes. Maybe the man of God misheard. Maybe the man of God is jealous. How could God say such a thing? Mm -hmm. God is God if he says what I want to hear. If God says what I don't want to hear, then I have to, to criticize. I have to question that whether it's true or not. It's truly God speaking to me. Yes. Samuel knew God. Yes. When God says no, it's a no. Yes. So Samuel did not persist. Yes. Samuel did not fight. Samuel did not try to change God's mind. But the point is, we are proving that how the world sees things yes. is different from how God sees things. Yes. God looks at the heart, the spirit inside. Yes. Man looks at the outward appearance. Yes. yes. A lot of people in this world who were disappointed, who were betrayed, who were let down, People's future thrown into the gutters by one person who is very reckless and very self-serving and self -self selfish. Most of those mistakes were made by the victims. They trusted people that do not deserve to be trusted. <coughs> Under a guise, a self-defeating guise. Mm -hmm that I will change this person <laughs> to be what I want them to be. <laughs> God is the creator of men. <laughs> you are not a creator. You have no capacity to change anyone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very important subject, Apostle. <laughs> very important. But the question, Apostle, that I see most people struggling is whether it all they hear when God is speaking. That is yes. the question. Yes. Because that's another problem, yes. yes. Some don't, do not hear at all. Yes. So I was thinking, I was going to go to the church. Yes. But if you don't hear from God, and yet there are people who hear from God around you. Yes. That's a blessing. Yes. That's a privilege that the world does not have. Yes. And whether you like it or not, there are people who hear from God in this world. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you may not like to hear. <laughs> but that is true. Yes. Some people call me because they want to hear if I've heard from God concerning certain matters. Yes. Sometimes I will tell them, I will pray about it. Sometimes, sometimes I will tell them, these questions you are bringing to me, God will never talk to me about these matters. They are not relevant. If you want to be deceived, find other men of God. They are going to tell you what you want to hear. Yes. <coughs> yes, people like me, I hear from God. But if you don't hear from God yourself and you ask me, and then I'll tell you what God has said. 
I will not persuade you to listen, to <laughs> obey what I would have said. No, I don't do that. I don't persuade people mm -hmm. to believe prophecies yes. or spiritual insights into certain subjects. I don't. You can either follow what I've said or you cannot follow. So many people have disobeyed what I advised them to do from what the Lord would have showed me. Yes. And they would always come back and say, we made a mistake. This time we are not going to resist what you say. <laughs> say again something else. We are in trouble again. Yeah. But the, the consequences of not listening to God, the far-reaching uh, results. Sometimes yes. they have permanent yes. consequences. Yes. yes. Permanent. Yes. yes. You may never recover from the damages. Yes. yes. Of making a mistake, especially once you have heard God's instruction. Yes. Vanu, Zavakaita, Vanguano Nakiza, Kuskira Nabu. Asika no Kazi, Zivakutu Munu, you are as right to. Unogone, Rukum Siachi Enda. Do you know, Pastor, that it's one of humanity's greatest weaknesses yes. to let people go? <coughs> yes. Yes. One of our greatest weaknesses. Mm. For which everyone, including myself, we should be praying all the time. Help me to let those people who are harmful to the assignment you gave me to go. Yes. You may feel a personal loss. Yes. But that will not be a loss in the eyes of God. Yes. To be a prophet. How, like, Pastor, you know, there is a girl right now who may be about to commit suicide. Yes. There is a girl right now who may have not eaten for the past three days. Yes. They are eating because a certain boyfriend mm. left them. Yes. <laughs> Some of those people you are crying because they lo left you. It was God who was saving you. Yes. But because you see with a physical eye, you don't see the wickedness that is in those people. Yes. You hate. Why did they leave me? The world is not ending today, my dear. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes God will be clearing rubbish yes. for him to bring better people around you. Yes. But because other people, they look nice or they talk nice. You think they are good for you? Sometimes you need people that do not speak nicely about you. Yes. yes. They build you better yes. Than, yes. than those people who say yes and agree and encourage you in everything <laughs> you are doing. <coughs> yes, you are right. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you are fine. You need someone who can look you into yes. the eyes and say, you smell foul in your mouth. Yes. You need to seek treatment. All these people who are avoiding you they are avoiding the foul smell that comes out of your mouth. Yes. You need people like that. Yes. I'm no rova. I'm gonna make one. I'm no rova. So go check my corrections. Ri, ni kanau juice gonzu no rova. Timengu ono dawa no nuku tau rota. Pana zawa ita. Yes. Yes. Wo gumbu ka so no correcta my corrections ago. You become better for yourself. Yes. Now, so men have a different value system. Yes. And when we say men, that includes men of God. <laughs> yes. If they are not listening to God, <laughs> yes. they will make wrong mistakes based on facial appearances. Yes. Surface appearances. <laughs> All right. The last scripture is 1 Corinthians 1.18. To 21. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, yes. but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Yes. For it is written, Yes. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to, not, to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Yet not God made foolish the wisdom of this world. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, 
it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, if you look at verse 20, verse 20 is saying, God has made foolish the wisdom of the world. Yes. Which means the wisest men in this world are the most foolish before God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If we apply the standard that we saw in Isaiah 55, mm. 8 and 9, mm. where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where are the great debaters of this world? Yes. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Yes. So, when we look at John, what the world said about John in Matthew eleven eighteen, when the worldly wisdom evaluated John, yes. Yes. it concluded that Maybe John was a demoniac. <laughs> <laughs> the wisdom of this world called John a demoniac. Yes. yes. But the wisdom of God yes. called John the greatest. Yes. yes. The question is, how shall we balance this contest? <laughs> if John had a Facebook account, everyone who is taking pictures of John and every yes. comment is saying, foo, 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 demon, demon, demon. Mbengo, nasa nakuchinja, onezwa kaita gandara ke, pamwepa isu kwa ka video, ajitana nisa wiza, otazemon. Manon Pusita would be Arutanza Mazomba. Picture of a boy girl to Robaka Fagafood. Your Vesco Passaid Neaki, I need by the Rene Gandam Chuno. They were a garam for a long time, Rotanga Gunua. Yes. My question is how did John balance this contest? What the Lord had said to him and what the world was saying about him. Mm -hmm. So if we look at 1 Corinthians 1.20, yes. at best, the wisest people we have on earth. Now I want to talk about Elon Musk. Yes. I want to give you an example of how worldly wisdom is foolishness before God. Yes. When we look at business acumen, Elon Musk is one of the most intelligent business people. He is running multi-billion dollar businesses yes. which, which are <coughs> rapidly growing huge profits for him. Yes. But people do not see that because he lacks salvation, he is introducing innovations that are demonstrating lack of wisdom. Yes. He is now saying he wants people to relocate to the Mars planet. <laughs> and the doctors are now coming up with the discovery that if men relocate to Mars, they are going to give birth to medically challenged children. Because the planet is not fit and suitable for humanity to thrive in that planet. Yes. At one point, he sold all his houses and he said he's going to be coming back to Earth from his Mars offices. <laughs> so he's going to be living in Mars, coming down into the Earth. They describe him as a nerd. Those who know, they know. What is the mental state of someone who is eventually described as a nerd? Yes. Very witty, very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Your IQ would be high, very high, like the Einsteins and what? The other ones, the Newtons. Yes. But my <clears throat> question is where does that wisdom take us? The suggestions that come from those great minds, they prove to be witless. Very amazing. Very amazing.
where is the wise? <laughs> where is the wise? What is the Paris Agreement all about? It's all about abandoning fossil fuels and using green energy because the world is warming up with a, a, a temperature of 2 degrees per annum. Mm -hmm. And they are saying that global warming rate is unsustainable. It is threatening the human race. But if you look at when we started using coal and diesel and, and propane and, and uh, uranium fuels, and, and, and kerosene. It was actually an era of technological advancements yes. which were celebrated <coughs> in the whole world. Yes. <laughs> it was wisdom yes. that invented diesel generated engines. <laughs> right now, the world is no longer safe because of that wisdom. <laughs> Global warming is a child of wisdom. Wisdom. No, I got the global warming. People are dying in, in Italy there. People are dying in California because of fires yes. that are breaking out. Go to Australia. They are losing huge tracts of land. The Amazon Basin caught fire a few months ago. And they are attributing all that to global warming. What started this global warming problem? Yes. It was wisdom. Yes. Industrial innovations. They are the reason why some places in, in, in Texas and in Alaska, you can't drink water there yes. because of the <coughs> mining activities which they did there. The chemicals they used... They have poisoned the earth. There are certain places where you can't grow an onion at all yes. because of chemicals. Yes. Those who are into oil extraction, they use chemicals that are dangerous to the soil. They are dangerous to insects. They are dangerous to even the water that is underground. We now have places where you can't drill a well and drink water. And it is because of wisdom. Yes. Taka changeera. Kushikira taku chati chifa. Neku changeera. If you go to Japan, people are dying on the streets. There is no fire. There is nothing. The temperatures and the skin, they are not reacting well. The sun is scorching their skins and some of them are dying. The government cannot afford to install enough air conditioners to all its population. But if you look at Japan today, it is the, heav the, heavily, the heaviest industry. The most heavy industries are in Japan. Yes. They are on top in terms of the manufacturing industry. They are on top in terms of the train system. There is no country with a better training system than Japan. Mm -hmm. But look at what they have done to the environment, mm -hmm. what they have done to the climate. Yes. Now they have to pump out billions yes. to plant trees to encourage solar energy, <laughs> electrically powered vehicles. What is wrong? This solar energy you are talking about it was not made in the science lab. Yes. It's a gift from God. <laughs> they left the sun <coughs> some 1,700, what, about what? It was in the, in, 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 the, in the 1600s when they started to discover fuels. But the industrial era started much later than that. Not more than 500 years ago. Yes. That's when they started to heavily explore these, these chemicals, these minerals. If we had just obeyed God and learned from God, we could have done better. 
So our problems are man-made. There is no devil involved. We abandoned God's wisdom. We called ourselves wise. We became fools. People are now talking about eating vegetables. Meats are dangerous. Processed foods are dangerous. Who introduced the processed foods? Who invented Coca-Cola? <laughs> when was Coca-Cola invented? How did the world react to the, to the, to the discovery of Coke? It was wisdom. Yes. Everyone is now campaigning, don't drink Coke, don't drink Coke. Was it not wisdom that manufactured the coke? <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> One day I went into a fast food shop. I was hungry. Yes. I ordered a pizza. And it looked like they put this with the petrol on top. And I asked, what are all these juices? They said they are sauces. And I said, what are they for? I don't take such stuff. So I said, no, give me another one. They said, we don't make, we don't make pizza without these oils. And I paid and I left the pizza there. <laughs> I said, eat it for free. I don't eat such rubbish. six pasta. one. So, who covered this? Warung is a vow with my baby at the gardens. Vow with a bit root in my carrots. As a daughter, as a gardener. Let's leave it. But let's, let's go back to First Corinthians 1 20. Yes. Where is the wise? Where, yes. Where is the wise? I'm going to change the RIP. Ha! As a Change a very pee. Eh? Fizzy drinks. One out to tip it in my hair. I see Muswaga got through a fizzy drink. He took a full was secretive. Advertise you, no, but ah. So there is nothing that tastes better than coke. <laughs> Where is the wise, Brother Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the dispute? Yes, read it. Yes. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Yet not God made foolish the wisdom of this world. Yes. For so God <laughs> has made the wisdom of this world foolish. foolish. Yes. Yes. <laughs> For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. The world. No, no, that part is good, brother. Yes. Pastor, that part is excitingly yes. excellent. Yes. <laughs> now, there are two wisdoms. The wisdom of God and the wisdom of this world. Yes. But now, he says, but after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by its own wisdom. That's what he meant there. Yes. It yes. knew not God. Yes. It means anyone who tries to learn about God, <laughs> he must first of all yes. relinquish his own wisdom. Yes. Yes. Because by the wisdom of this world, men shall never know God. Yes. And it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So when the world by its wisdom looks at preaching, yes. it's a foolishness to it. So John the greatest preacher was a fool. Was a fool. Yes. That's what we want to learn now. John, when the world looked at him, yes. John was a fool. Yes. And my question is, how many among us are willing to be labeled fools for the sake <coughs> of God? Look. At First Corinthians chapter four, yes. verse number nine to ten, between eleven. Yes. For I think that God had set forth as the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. 
We are fools for Christ's sake. Aha. But you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even Apostle Paul mentioned it. Yes. yes. We are fools yes. Yes. for Christ's sake. Yes. Which means those who do not believe, when they looked at Paul, yes. they called him a fool. Yes. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want us to look at John yes. with another perspective. Yes. Verse 12. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all members of that board, one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So the church is made up of many believers. Yes. And all those believers are members of one body. Yes. And Christ is the head of that body. Yes. Yes. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, or have or have been all made to and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Yes. For the body is not one member. But many. The body is not made up of one member. Yes. We need many members to have one body. Yes. So whether you are anywhere in the world, as long as you are a believer, you are a member of that body, and the body is not complete without you. Yes. There is not another member who should deny great another member. Yes. And think that they are less important in the body. Yes. The body is not enough without other members. Yes. So every member is important in the body. Yes. Let us not despise other members of the body. Yes. Yes. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Yes. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Yes. If the whole body were an eye, where, where were the hearing? If the whole, if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. Aha! Yes. So where where the nose are? Yes. It pleased God to put the nose there. <laughs> yes. So if you look at a human body, there are members which we can see. When we look at anyone, anytime. But there are other members of the body that are inside the body, which we cannot see. Yes. But I want us to look at the language that Apostle Paul uses in this narrative. Yes. Where you are as a child of God. Yes. Your position in the body. Yes. Your responsibilities in the body. Yes. It is according to what pleased God. Yes. God is the one who set every member in the body as it pleases him. Yes. A member cannot ask God to put to be put somewhere. Yes. One of the toes cannot say put me at the crest of the head. Yes. No gani ka gunwe kutsoka kari pakati pemusoro so kachinze kakazo kumbira ikako kakazo ngonyarwa. Yes. Yes. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. Yes. And if they were all one member, where were the body? Yes. But now are they many members, yet but one body? We are many members, but one body, one church. Yes. yes. And if I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. There is no member that can tell another member, I don't need you. Yes. And that's a problem we have, Pastor. We have other believers who tell other believers, I don't need you. Yes. There are other members that are close to each other. <laughs> and there are other members that are far from each other. The eye mm. is closer to the nose. The nose is closer to the mouth. But the nose is far away from the knee. Yes. And because they are far apart, the nose can say to the knees, I don't need you. Yes. The nose forgets. If it needs fresh air, 
The knees are the ones which are going to take the nose to fresh air. Yes. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Others are in the finance department. Others yes. are in the ushering department. Yes. There is no member which cannot say, which can say to another member, I don't need you. Or maybe you have a job, another believer is not yet employed. Or whether you have a house, another believer is not yet owning a property. Or whether you have some small money, other believers are struggling. You can never tell another believer, I don't need you. Yes. The moment you say that, you are proving that you are not a part of this body. Yes. The eye cannot say unto the end, I have no need of you. Yes. No, again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. 22. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Yes. And those members Listen of the body. Listen to verse 22, Pastor. Mm. Those members of the body which look like they are useless. Yes. Or they are very weak. They are necessary. Yes. 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 And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Yes. And our uncomely calm, calmly parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked. To that part. To that part which lacked. I want you to repeat verse 23. Yes. And you are going to see that this scripture is also referring to John. Yes. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. You see? And, yes. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Now, the word comely mm -hmm. and uncomely, yes. it means they are... There are members that people are ashamed of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Think about your body, my brethren. <laughs> think, don't, don't share with anyone. Just <laughs> think on your own. Think about your body and ask yourself, what are the uncomely parts of your body? <laughs> mm. And what are the less honorable parts of your body? Yes. The Bible says, upon these, we must bestow more abundant honor. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. But you see, I started this discussion by telling you yes. that in as much as we are all servants of God in one way or the other, yes. there are other servants which are more honored by the master than others. Yes. In as much as they are all important, Apostle Paul is saying f f at first, no member is useless. Yes. All members of the body are important. Yes. Yes. But then he started to say, there are more honorable members in this body. Yes. And the question we were going to ask him, what are those members? Yes. The answer is in verse 23. Yes. He said, Amen. well... Yes, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, yes. upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Now, and, yes. Let's highlight the word think. We go back to Samuel's mistake. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's your mind that tells you yes. that this member of the body is less honorable. Yes. But in actual fact, that is the member that you should bestow more abundant honor. Yes. <laughs> Those which look like they are uncomely. Yes. They have abandoned comeliness. Yes. Jineta says, you know, you know, nyadzisa jiaji. Those not ones in those in Zagato Zigama man Jesus. What I told Arabic, I was busy. 
I, I'm trying to find. <laughs> I'm trying to find the 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 dictionary definition of the word comeliness. Yes. Pleasurably conforming to notions of good appearance, suitability, or proportion. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are other um, uh, the, the 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 synonyms are aesthetic, beautiful. Cute, f cute, fair, good, mm -hmm. good looking, goodly, <laughs> gorgeous, <laughs> lovely, pretty, handsome, seemly, seemly, looking well. So, they are members of the body that do not look well. <laughs> Which we think. We think they don't <laughs> look well. <laughs> so, when, when, when people are saying this, person is beautiful. Yes. They, they don't look at those they members. Don't those they don't members. want to know them. Yes. They, don't, they, don't, they don't see them, Pastor, because <laughs> what I wanted, it. Pastor, yes. you're going where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> These uncomely parts yes. are the reasons why we put on our clothes. Yes. Because we think we should never allow people to see those ugly parts. Yes. But Apostle Paul is saying, well, 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 well. <laughs> we must be still abandoned <laughs> on <owner." Yes. laughs> <laughs> those parts. <laughs> yeah. So what is important now is let's not go further <laughs> into this. Yes. Let's end. <laughs> they are less honorable members yeah, and, comely. and comely parts. Yes. Let's not mention them. <laughs> we have others who have no brakes on their vehicles. Yes. yes. They will quickly get lost. Yes. Pastor, Chikon Zoro Chatino to Fekera Embe Susuga. In now, you will tell me what is Yes. 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 If we are talking about fruitfulness, it talks, it means bearing fruit, it means producing fruit. Yes. And if that is the case, it then refers to bearing of children. The moment we talk about bearing children and pregnancies, yes. that's when you realize that parents do not discuss much with their children. <laughs> because that process involves these less honorable parts, yes. the uncomely parts, because the parents, be, they feel uncomfortable. Yes. But in order for a family to grow, yes. what works most are these <laughs> uncomely parts mm -hmm. rather than the comely parts. Yes. Verse 24, I want you to compare the comely parts and the uncomely parts. Yes. For our comely parts, you have no need. Do you see? Yes. But God... No, wait, wait. <laughs> Let's not go further. There, there's, a there's a colony there. Yes. yes. Did you say that? Yes. yes. Our comely parts? You have, have no need. need. The parts that look well are useless. <laughs> They give a false impression. Okay, let's let's look, uh, media team, give us the new American standard version of this scripture. I want to see if they were able to bring it out clearly. Yes. Mitezo yedu yatino spendanguwa na yopa girazi anza ina basa. Yes, read the first part. Whereas our more presentable members we have no need of it but God it is so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. So that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Ha! Ah, it didn't bring out it uh, clearly. Maybe, maybe if we yes. see this let's, number. let's look at the RSV. Let's look at the RSV or the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version. Yes. We just want to look at this. Yes. 
Let's, let's read it, yes. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Yes. And those members of, yes. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member. Go back to verse 23. And those members of the body yes. that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor. Yes. You see? Yes. <laughs> and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. I yes. think, let's, and let's, let's use this aspect. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think he tried to bring it He tried to bring it out yes. properly. The issue of clothing. Those members which we think are less honorable, yes. we clothe with the greater honor. Yes. <laughs> to simplify what this scripture is saying, is that if you look at your, your clothes right now, there are aspects of your body where you can just put on one, one thing on top and you can go. And there are other aspects where you need to put two or three on top behind and then you put another on top <laughs> to cover it. <laughs> it is because you think those members are less honorable. So you clothe them. You give them great honor. In other words, you spend more money to cover them. Yes. <laughs> You can spend the whole day without a hat, and when it's hot, you can buy any hat of any price. But there are certain aspects of our body where you need to read a lot to find what exactly to wear. Otherwise, you end up in hospital. Yes. <laughs> and those are the reasons why sometimes you go to bath. Otherwise, if it were not for those members, some of us would never go to bath at all. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when people take a bath, they are doing it for the less honorable members. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. So what is the gist, what is the importance of this scripture? Mm -hmm. Because we are looking at the human body. Yes. But it is a picture of the true body. Yes. The church. Are you getting this? Yes. We can't already show now. Pane mutezo uripamu viri wako. Yes. Wauno nyara nawe iwewe. Ndeo wauno kava. Uputira, uputira foot. Wazo uputira foot. Kwa zeta mutezo wauno ta hawi wano wana shawa wana feza. Uyu kana kwa hanibu uvara. Uya wana pressure. Kana wakato square wakadaro wana problem na hawi. Yes. As pane mutezo wakuti. Zime nguo zako zino fara mitezo yo zika tobuda. Vana ntu tango tutuko aita zei. Havana kuona mitezo yo yo. Vana zime nguo jete zava ona zino kafa mitezo yo. Zino reva kuti mitezo ii. Iwewe unoyona isina kukudzu wa. Yes. Ndogu saka uchi kufara uchi putira shaka nyanya. Yes. Zino gwaro ni kuti. Mitezo yo yo. Ndogu ya katoko shakudarika iya iya ineita sekunge. Yakanaka ya. Yes. Ya ya inane basare sepa verse 24. Patronzi the honorable members yeah, have no need, need yes. of, of this honor. Yes. Aina need gana. So, I want to show you why this is related to John. Yes. Go back to First Corinthians chapter 4. Let's start again from verse 9. Remember, he was talking about honoring Yes. Members of the body. Yes. And we discovered that mm. some members deserve more honor yes. than other members. Yes. Yes. But the problem is there are other members that appear very good and acceptable. Yes. According to God's rule, we should never honor those those members. Yes. We should honor those members that look unseemly. Yes. Uncomely. Uncomely. <laughs> Less honorable. Yes. We must bestow much more honor yes. on those ones. Nengo zia zinu nzikuwa zaita seiku. Anzikuza hii zozo. 
Kudarika Diaz no one kera. Yes. <laughs> let's let's see Apostle Paul clarifying. Yes. First Corinthians twelve, my brethren, verse twenty-three and twenty-four was clarified by First Corinthians four, verse nine and eleven. <laughs> For I think that God had set forth as the apostles last. Think about the apostles as members of the same body. And I want you to look at the prominence of these members called apostles. Yes. Number one, Apostle Paul thinks the same language which was used in 1 Corinthians 12. Yes. And those members of the body which we think. Yes. Take note of the word think in both the scriptures. <laughs> For I think that God had set forth <laughs> us the apostles last. These members called apostles, the apostle thinks they were put last. As it were appointed to death. They are going to die. For we are made a spectacle unto the world. Yes. And to angels. Yes. And to men. What exactly are you talking about? Verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sake. These members are despised as being foolish. But ye are wise in Christ. Other members mm. are not despised, they are honored. Mm. We are weak. Yes. But you are strong. Yes. Mm. Ye are honorable. Yes. But we are despised. Let's oh. end there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Pastor Mabatashi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing the, the comparison that uh, Apostle Paul is, is giving here. Was the members of the body we are talking of believers, believers. which constitute the body of Christ. Even ministers, Even yes. ministers are believers as well. The same body again. They are members of the same body. Yeah, they are members yes. of the same body. Yes. But even among the ministers, because Apostle is speaking on behalf of ministers, mm -hmm. and he's saying, as apostles, he thinks the apostles have been set last. Last? Yes. The yes. apostles are despised. They are despised. For Christ's sake, they are regarded as fools. They are For also Christ's weak. Sake. They yes. are also weak. Yes. Let's read <coughs> now again First Corinthians 12. Yes. Yes. Verse 23. 23, yes. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what should we do? Now, Upon uh, this. before you go, this, yes. who are the less honorable members? They are the apostles. The apostles. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear. First of all, yes. yes. They are the dishonorable members are what? They are the apostles. They are the apostles. Yes. Despised. They are the, dis the, the dishonored ones. Yes. They are the despised ones. Yes. They are the weak ones. Yes. Read yes. again, set afresh. <laughs> <laughs> and those members <coughs> of the body, which we think to be less honorable, Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts, uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Yes. 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 And the, the RSV says what? Oh, uh, uh, let me read verse 24 as well. Yes. Because we heard that uh, the apostles, they are, ne uh, uh, they are always in need. Yes. In First Corinthians chapter 9. Yes. Yes. Verse chapter 20, 4, verse 9, yes. Yes. Uh, chapter 12, verse 24. For our comely parts have no need, but God had tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which legged. You so see now. The apostles legged. The, the <laughs> apostles legged. Is yes. that true? Go back to verse 10. Chapter 4, verse 10. Yes. It we, we, yes. Yes, verse 10 and 11. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are perfected and have no certain dwelling place. And labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we blessed. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat, we, we, we are made as the filth of the world. Yes. <laughs> and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. Yes, yes. We are made as the filth of the world. Yes. For our comely parts have no need, 
but God God tempered the body together. Verse 14 is even dangerous. Yes. Of, of ch chapter 4. <laughs> yes, yes. I write not these things to shame you, but my beloved sons. But <laughs> yes, my beloved, my beloved sons. sons. I warn you. I warn you. It's a warning. <laughs> yes. It's a warning. Pastor, what have you discovered from these two scriptures? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting how scripture interprets another scripture. Yes. Uh, but if you would read First uh, Corinthians chapter 12 without getting the reference or the interpretation from, from chapter 4, you will not understand what uh, the Apostle was talking about. But now coming back to, to John the Baptist, because that is where we were, you now discover and understand how important John was in the assignment of Christ or in the ministry of Christ yes. and what people and how people despised him and yet the Lord said John was the greatest as compared to what people think or how people viewed John. Yes. So what it means is when you see those people who are despised, those people who are regarded fools, for the sake of Christ. They are the members that are despised on the body. But even if you look at the apostles, because the foundation upon which the church is built, it is laid by the apostles. Yes. In other words, there is no church without the laying down of the foundation by the apostles. But those who are instructed by God to lay the foundation, they appear to be a last in other words, they are less honorable or inferior in terms of how people look at them. But a warning is coming now in the value system. And I think this body, uh, the body parts example that we have used, it clarifies it <coughs> all. Because usually we make judgments on those bo uh, body parts that have no need. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, when when you look at the Corinthian church, yes, you suddenly think about the believers which are there. Yes, those are the comely parts that you see. Yes, yes. when you hear testimonies, yes. you are going to see faces of believers who yes. are thanking God for what God has done. Yes, you don't see the uncomely parts. Yes, you don't see the dirty work. Yes that the apostles have done yes. to establish that church, that assembly, to establish the foundation of the gospel in that area. Yes. The sufferings, the persecutions, the sleepless nights, the, the challenges involved. Yes. You don't see it. Yes. Yes, that's true. And you're going to realize as well that only fools expose those parts. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And now let's look at John, <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> let's look at Mark, like Mark chapter 1. Let's start from verse 3 to 6. And you are going to see that John was an uncomely part of Christ. Yes. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Yes. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Yes. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And they went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Yes. And John was clothed with the coming of the hair and with the girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. You see, mm -hmm. is there comeliness in this ministry? No. Was it an attractive, charismatic ministry? Was it a mega church? No, in the, no. In the perspective of men, no. It wasn't? Yes. There was nothing exciting yes. about going to John. Yes. yes. If you were going to advise John, 
you would actually advise him to go for some counseling. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's why they concluded he is a devil. Yes. yes. He looked like a man who has lost in touch with the real world. Yes. He looked like a man living in, a, in fantasy land. He looked like a man who had lost his mind. <laughs> How can you describe yourself as the voice? Whose voice? <laughs> what voice are you about? Make straight the way for the Lord. Yes. But on this uncomely member, God established and bestowed much greatness. Yes. That is what I wanted us to see. Yes. Marvaka tipa a member ya inyadziza. So kutu wan waka trasa jona ita sapa si kutu mara miye ruzia arugit. But are uncomely like this, as uncomely as John was, as a member of the work of Christ, there was much greatness bestowed upon this uncomely part. Yes. Mm -hmm. First 23 again. First Corinthians 12. Yes. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Yes. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Yes. <laughs> Pastor, it's, it sounds like a paradox. Yes, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a paradox. It's an irony. Yes. Yeah. Why is. would you bestow abundant? Because the word abundant it means more. Yes. But these two words are appearing one after the other. Yes. yes. You bestow more abundant honor. Yes. yes. Which means if you find abundant honor, it's not enough. Yes. You need to add more honor <laughs> on abundant honor. Yes. <laughs> to whom? To what? And well, parts. to the uncomely parts. Yes. To the unseemly parts. Because the yes. uncomely parts have abandoned comeliness. Yes. 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 It has abandoned comeliness. Yes. yes. There is no decency that exceeds that of John. Yes. yes. When we talk about a man <laughs> who was decent in the eyes of God, yes. Yes. John the Baptist was the peace setter. Yes. yes. And yet, the world looking at him, he was uncomely. Yes. He was unseemly. That's why they said, he is a devil. Yes. The value system is very bushed. Yes. Very complicated. Yes. Right now, if you invite anyone to your church, <laughs> they ask you for your man of God's photo. They want to see the, how expensive are his clothes that he wears. <laughs> and the pastors are wearing expensive clothes so that they can attract people who are looking for that appearance because they think it's a sign of success in the ministry. To the extent where pastors are borrowing <laughs> expensive cars, yes. they are buying them on credit building expensive houses. The more you want to appear calmly, the less calmly you are in the eyes of God. Yes. Pastor Mashona. Yes. Ukaona wakuga zira appearance ye calmliness, ye decent pambiri pavana. Yes. Unotori very indecent pambiri pavana. Yes. Why is that? Hebrews 4.13. Why is that? Yes. Yes. Why does God use a reverse value system to the one of this world? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Every creature is manifest in God's eyes. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You see now? Yes. All things are naked. Oh. So if, every, if everyone is naked right now, how much do you think you can cover yourself until you become calmly in the eyes of God? <laughs> <laughs> you would rather wait for him. 
to put comeliness on you. You see? Honor on you, yes. That's so, it. if everyone is naked, yes. it doesn't mean, it, it, it then means it doesn't mean how much you think you cover yourself. Yes. Mm. You are still going to remain naked before God. Yes. It is God who is going to cover you. Yes. <coughs> yes. With whatever level of comeliness he will put on you. that he wants to put upon you. Yes. Depending on the honor yes. that he wants to give to you. Yes. Do you accept that the servants of God are going to have different levels of honor? Yes. Let's read again for the last time, First Corinthians 12, 23. Yes. And it's, it's a proof that servants of God are going to be honored differently. Yes. yes. There are other members which are going to receive abundant honor. Yes. Yes. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Mm -hmm. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Yes. For no, our... No. Yes. We, we go back to verse 23. Yes. Highlight the words, more abundant honor. Yes. More abundant honor. Yes. This is what we see our Lord doing to John. Yes. In as much as he appeared uncomely. Yes. Yes. Less honorable. Yes. Lost. Strange. Mm -hmm. Awkward. Mm -hmm. But God made him to appear less honorable. Yes. So that he could bestow. Yes. More abundant honor on him. Yes. yes. So, when he said, of all that are born of women, there is not reason a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Yes. It means the Lord is bestowing more abundant honor on one of the members of the body. Yes. The same body. Yes. You see now. Yes. Verse 11. You want to read verse 11? Yes, I, I was commenting on uh, him placing honor on that member of the board. Oh, okay, Matthew 11. Honor. Yes. Okay, let's go to First Corinthians 15. I'm still proving that we are going to receive different honor yes. from the Lord, depending on our service, Yes. which depends on the gift of grace. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, verse 35 yes. but some men will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come yes. thou fool that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die yes. and that which thou sowest thou sowest not that body that shall be but bear grain it may chance of wheat or of some other grain Yes. but God gives it a body as it hath pleased him Yes. And to every seed his own body. Yes. All flesh is not the same flesh. <laughs> but there is one kind mm -hmm. of flesh of men. Yes. Mm -hmm. Another flesh of beasts. Mm -hmm. Another of fishes. Yes. And another of birds. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are also celestial bodies. Mm -hmm. Yes. And bodies terrestrial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the glory of the celestial is one. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. Yes. There is one glory mm -hmm. of the sun. Mm -hmm. Yes. And another glory of the moon. Mm -hmm. Yes. And another <laughs> glory of the stars. Mm -hmm. Yes. For one star mm -hmm. differed from mm -hmm. another star mm -hmm. in glory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so also. <laughs> yes, Finish it, Pastor. Verse 42. So, also is the resurrection of the dead. Yes. 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 Ijo. It is so. So, also <laughs> is the resurrection of the dead. <laughs> yes. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. <laughs> now, now, I want you to know that when he spoke about. The glory of the sun differing from the glory of the moon, differing from the glory of the stars. Yes. And one star differing in glory with another star. He concluded by saying, so also is the resurrection of the dead. Yes. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. 
It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Yes. So the word glory is actually a, an antonym of the word dishonor in verse 43 there. What it means is it is a synonym of the word honor. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in, in glory. Yes. So when he said the glory of one star is different from the glory of another star. What he actually means is the honor of one star shall be different from the honor of another star. Yes. But what stars were, 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 was he talking about? The answer is there. He was talking about the resurrection of the dead to the saints. Yes. yes. But perhaps one may say that is too um, a denotative interpretation. Your exegesis, your exegesis is becoming too scholarly and academic. It's not. <laughs> Let's look at Hebrews 11, verse 11 to 12. Yes. And you are going to see that the word stars there is referring to children of God. Yes. Hebrews 11, 11 and 12. Yes. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. So, the subject matter is Sarah. Yes. Yes. And was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Yes. Therefore sprang there even one, even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. So... The stars that God spoke to Abraham about in Genesis 15, mm. they were referring to children. Yes. Whose children? <laughs> the answer is in Romans chapter 9, verse number 7. Yes. Neither because, to verse number 9. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they ch all children. Yes. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So we know. When Sarah conceived, according to Hebrews 11, 11 and 12, yes. it was Isaac who was born. Yes. So when verse 12 says, spring there even of one, and him as good as dead, yes. so many as the stars of the sky in the mount should be. Yes. The word one there is not referring to Abraham. Yes. The word one is referring to Isaac. Yes. Because Isaac was the only son yes. of Abraham. Yes. And what we want to learn today is, if there were so many children of Abraham born as many as the stars of the sky yes. through one son Isaac, yes. what were those stars in brackets sons yes. referring to? Yes. So we are reading Romans 9 from verse number 7. Yes. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Yes. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Yes. That is they what it means. The words that is in verse 8, yes. it simply means is <coughs> he is explaining what verse number 7 means. Yes. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Yes. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Let's end there. Yes. When God said, in Isaac shall your seed be called in one, remember, yes. the word one in, 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 in Hebrews 11. Yes. He was talking about Isaac like I mentioned. Yes. yes. So the promise was, in Isaac shall Abraham's seed be called. Yes. What was this all about? Verse 8 starts by these two words. That, that is. is. Yes. yes. They which are the children of the flesh, yes. these are not the children of God. Yes. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Yes. So when God spoke about Abraham having so many star sons as the stars of the sky, yes. what it means, that is, God was not talking about Abraham's children yes. or Isaac's children. Yes. God was talking about God's children. Yes. The stars of the sky are God's children. Yes. They are spiritual. Yes. yes. You get what I'm talking about? Yes. So when we come back to 1 Corinthians 15, he said, well, in the resurrection, there shall be different levels of glory. Yes. How different? He says, well, the glory of the sun shall be different from the glory of the moon. Yes. 
and the glory of stars are going to be different from the glory of the moon. Yes. But each star shall differ in glory. Yes. With <laughs> another star. Yes. Do we now know what stars all are all about? Children of God. Stars are all about children of God. Yes. Which means one child of God shall have a different glory yes. to another child of God. Yes. In other words, the children of God. Yes. In as much as they shall all enter heaven, yes. but they shall not receive the same honor. Yes. yes. What we shall receive a, in equal value of yes. is entrance into heaven. Yes. But as far as honor is concerned, <laughs> honor shall be different. Yes. Stars shall differ in glory. Yes. Depending on the dishonor. That, of, they, of that they received, yes. <laughs> yes. If you are dishonored the more, you, yes. the more you are more. going to be honored more there. <laughs> yes. It's, it's proportional. If you <laughs> honor yourself here, <laughs> you are doomed. <laughs> you are going to be dishonored more. Yes. So John was dishonored more. Yes. You get it? Yes. yes. That's why John was honored more yes. by the Lord. <laughs> The more the Lord dishonored John yes. in the eyes of men yes. was the more that John was honored by God. Yes. yes. You get it? Yes. yes. It's a simple illustration. If you want to provide a bigger light using candle, then you have to burn more wax. The more the candle burns, the bigger the light. Yes. So if you want to burn a bigger wax candle, you have to put a, a thicker cord on the in the in the middle east. Yes. So that the cord <coughs> may be strong enough to melt all the wax. The more the candle melts in brackets is dishonored, mm -hmm. that's the greater the light. Yes. So when we honor the candle, we say this one is producing more light. Than yes. that one. Yes. But how is it producing more light? It is producing more light because of it's, its own dishonor. Yes. It's being dishonored the most. Yes. Pastor, I don't forget what I'm not Those who are honoring themselves, according to scripture, they have already received their reward. Yes. <laughs> The last scripture that proves that the servants of God are going to differ in terms of their honor yes. from the Lord. It's Luke chapter 13. Mm. Verse, it's chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Uh, <laughs> Verse 7. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden. Jesus put a parable. When he Remember, verse 1 yes. says, And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they washed him. Yes. So Jesus was eating bread. Yes. Yes. In one of the chief Pharisees' house. Yes. So the words, those which were bidden, yes. is referring to those who ate with Jesus yes. inside the chief Pharisee's house. Yes. yes. They were invited, <coughs> many of them. Yes. Jesus was also a guest. <laughs> yes. So Jesus is giving a parable inside a chief of the Pharisee's house. Yes. yes. To share it with those who are invited for dinner. Yes. Yes. Let's find out what happens there. Start a fresh verse 7. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden. To those which were invited. Yes. yes. When he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, <laughs> saying unto them. So as they entered into the chief Pharisee's house, <laughs> Jesus, the Lord, observed. They marked out chief rooms and chief chairs. Yes. All the guests were looking for the best seat to sit on. Yes. And he observed that. They love to sit on the chief rooms and chief chairs on the high tables. Yes. What did he say? 
when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding. If you are invited to attend a wedding, yeah. sit not down in the highest room. Sit not on the highest table. Lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. So, when you sit yourself on the most, <laughs> the biggest chair, <laughs> the greatest chair, the problem is, a more honorable man may <laughs> have been invited than you. Yeah. Again, <coughs> it's very clear. It's very clear. Yes. There are more honorable men people on than, earth others. than others. In the sight of God. In the sight of God. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 9. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, give this man place. So you'll be embarrassed. Stand up. The guest is speak out. The chief guest has arrived. Yes. And thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. Yes. yes. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. Yes. That when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that seated meet with thee. Yes. <laughs> For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, mm -hmm. and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Isn't it exciting, Pastor Balloy? <laughs> yes. Now, let, let, let's hear pa Brother Nelson read verse 10 again. Yes. yes. Now, but when, when, when Brother Nelson, when you read verse 10, yes. think about John the Baptist. Yes. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, yes. That's what, that was Did you see about. John in verse 10? Yes. <laughs> let's read verse 10 again. But when thou art bidden, go. when thou art invited, yes. So the, the whole parable is based on receiving yes. an invitation, yes. which means there is a greater one in this parable. Yes. Who is that greater one? <laughs> the, the one inviter. who is inviting is yes. the inviter, yes. or the inviting authority. Yes. yes. You see now, yes. because the inviting authority <laughs> pastor mm. is the one with the power to stand you up, yes. the one who to can. say stand up. <laughs> is the one who determines who is more honorable. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one you who see? This so what we are seeing here, pastor, mm. if you compare this parable, the parable of the sin, the 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 son of the king who was getting married there. Remember, mm. in Matthew twenty-two. Yes. You remember the king sent messengers to invite guests. Yes. That man who was chased out was found not wearing the garment. Yes. So the king is the one who invites. Yes. In as much as we said, you can't honor yourself. Yes. It is your master who honors you. Yes. Like John was honored. Yes. This master who has invited guests. Yes. After guests have seated themselves without asking him where they should sit, yes. he's going to come in. Yes. And he's going to say, Yeah, that one with the beard, stand <laughs> up. Yes. I've got an, a more honorable <laughs> guest than you. Yes. Which means either you are a child of God or yes. you are a servant of God. Yes. In both circumstances, yes. you are a guest. Yes. Because you were invited yes. to Jesus. Yes. Come to Jesus. <laughs> yes. Come for your salvation. Yes. Come unto me. Yes. All that are, are tired, all that are labor and are, are, are heavy laden. Yes. And I'll give you rest. It's an invitation. Yes. yes. And it's a, yes. we are. Yes. Muru yes. I see problem. Problem. <laughs> so we have jostling and shoulder brushes happening in the church. Yes. People are jostling for the biggest chairs and the biggest seats. Yes. When Pastor Baloy announces we have an elder in the church, they want to ask, when was this elder born again? I was born again two years <laughs> earlier than this man. What does this man know that qualifies him to be an elder? But what excites me, brethren, about this parable is that the more honorable guest always arrives late. I yes. don't know if you realize that. Yes. <laughs> so that people... <laughs> yes. 
Ujito fuka wote sinzi ndiri ndatanga kugara ka. Chingo ndi siya hai. <laughs> Nyaya kutu no gara pai. Hai ditemen wende kutu wakau ya rini. <laughs> Ino kutu ditemen wende kutu uripa levo yipi. <laughs> Ye ona. Not this But mm -hmm. thou, when thou, but I wanted you, you were, you were reading in a non-existing word. Sorry. We wanted the word but. Yes. yes. Which means he's saying this is what you should do. Yes. When you were born again, those who are from the Kuitaish, for what attend the Uka. Yes. Uka to a pastor. How you gonna go shikam siwe or not in the umbel? Ono chaga si jesus si umbe. What in the Uka? Ah ah. Uka uka uka. Chero kanzu am diko. Ten years ten. Yes. But when thou art invited, Pastor Reed. But when thou art invited, go and sit in the lowest room. Yes. Go that, and sit down. Yes. In the lowest room. Yes. Can I go on and buy my chair? It don't take a pass. It's a good guy. Yes. Yes. That when he that invited thee come, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship. In the presence of them that sit at meet with thee. Ah! <laughs> yes, Brother Nelson, tell us in what way yes. does John appear in this verse? <laughs> what is the key word? Yes, uh, John was made the lowest. In, in terms, he, he came and occupied the lowest seat because he was most despised. Yes. Yeah. In, in his life on, uh, on 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 earth and in his his ministry was very much despised. But then, when the Lord was to come, he then said he was the greatest. Hi. Yes, <laughs> you are right. You are right. You are missing certain things. You are missing certain things, Pastor. Talk. You are right. He was the, the lowest when he when he came. Yes. But then <coughs> the the Lord later yes exalted him. Yes. The Lord later promoted him, yes. made him the greatest. Yes. But there, 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 there are hints that the Lord was talking about John. Yes. What are the hints? Brethren, Mahawana Werema Hinsi. Friend. The word friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. We, we will buy you a, a crate of eggs. Yes. Now, why do you say the word friend is a hint of John the Baptist? Yes, because he, John the Baptist actually uh, claimed in John chapter 3, verse 29, that he is the friend to the bridegroom. Let's read it. If yes. you are correct, we will find out soon. <laughs> scriptures are interpreted by scripture, Brother Nelson. Yes. There is no need to consult Tsikamdan. Uh, he that uh, the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, Rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. Yes. So he according to John 3 verse 29, yes. John was a friend yes. to the inviting authority. Yes. Yes. Who is the bridegroom? Yes. According to John. Yes. And according to Luke 14, the, 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 the inviting authority would say friend. And yes. the friend there is a capital letter F, meaning there are not specific. Many specific friend. Yes. Pastor, <laughs> Have you found John again in a different way? There's another phrase that, that brings John into the picture here. There's a very simple scripture, a, a simple structure yes. that shows you that the Lord was talking about John. Oh. You are still looking. Yeah. Father Nelson, have you found something else? Uh, not as yet. All right. Mm. Read it again. But when thou art bidden, yes. go and sit down in the lowest room, yes. that when he that bade thee cometh, 
he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. Now, look at it, Brother Nelson. Yes. <laughs> there are two things that can only apply in John's life. Yes. Which shall never apply to anyone else. Yes. <laughs> have you seen that, Pastor? The first thing is, there are not many lowest rooms. There is one lowest room. Yes. The second scenario is, <laughs> when the inviting authority comes, yes. he comes after yes. the one has already occupied the lowest. Yes. <laughs> Which means, the, the, the inviting authority will come bef behind you. Yes. You don't know what to Yes, yes. You won't know where you are. Inviting authority is at your speaker. So it's just a chat to eat. It's just a chat to eat because it's just a chat to eat. It's just a chat to eat. Johnny Egg and Dia Gafado. Yes. Inviting yes. authority is at your speaker. Dear foot and gaga occupy the lowest. Yes. yes. Because in Dia Ganga, a reed shaken by the wind. Yes. Oh. <laughs> John only is the one who sat down yes. in the lowest room. <laughs> Nobody ever stayed in the wilderness for more than 16 years. Yes. Nobody was a lone voice oh. crying out in the wilderness, I yes. am not here, but he is coming. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. yes. And he, he, I'm, the last uh, part, he is the only one also weird praise in the presence of his disciples and everyone yes, in Israel. Yes, 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 yes. And you see what the, the, the inviting authority said to him. He said, friend, go up higher. Yes. <laughs> and that's Matthew 11, 11 for us. <laughs> of those born of women, yes. there is no reason a one greater than John the Baptist. Yes. In other words, the Lord was simply saying to John, stand up, <laughs> go up higher. <laughs> Buku, buku, buku. What are you going to say? Kuti. If I'm just being a pastor, pastor, I'm just being a pastor. 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 i The lowest is no longer occupiable. Yes. The lowest room is no longer occupiable. Yes. What do you see? What do you think? Uh, let's see our children here. <laughs> what they are seeing. Uh, it's a pregnant face. It's a pregnant face. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, the mother of our children go suit. Choto e cha kuti dribe jawan. Ocha kuti. Oketwa me jarini. Hai vazi va. Ngai professor. Ah. Ngofunga ka profit wa to greatest. Yes. Unogo badi vazi. Da to mwana nga chiti me bi ka profit a zuri accurate. A to greatest. A to greatest. Ah. Constance yeah. says he was also the only one to forerun Jesus because he, Jesus, only came once. Book Innocent Saunyama says John placed himself on the lowest position. Emmanuel Mdarikiri is citing John 3 30. Okay. He must increase and I must decrease. Aha, Musi is saying Buku Iriria Tuta Piri was a do. Tonga is saying the lowest room is no longer occupiable. Rita Rudichnone Zakanamun, Ivan Eposian Gushrain, Anu Dai, Anu Yashida Guzisa Gumsoro. Ah, wonderful is saying Kuzizora Kwakanaki is a Icho Kwadicho Cho. What a profound message. All right. So, we were talking um, about some other things which we want to wind up this message with. But before we do that, I want to 
I want to say something that I, I would have spoken about when we, when we did the um, Elijah, the forerunner message. I am going to prove again that Elisha was greater than Elijah because Elisha was a type of Christ. And we are going to see John doing something that we should have um, spoken about then. Yes. But what I want us to do is let's start by remembering that Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18 he slew 450 prophets of Baal which belonged to Jezebel the queen of Israel who had deceived the king of Israel into bringing idolatry into Israel. Yes. <clears throat> Verse number 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. How many were there? He Four. just said, uh, yes. take them. Yes. But I know there were 450. Yes. You can read the whole chapter to verify this. Yes. Now, these prophets belonged to Jezebel. Yes. Let's read what Jezebel said in First uh, Kings 19. Yes. Verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with thou how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Verse, up to verse 3. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he, and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. So Elijah fled. The flight of Elijah was caused by his fear for this woman. Yes. But as we talked about it earlier on last time, we proved through Second Kings chapter nine mm -hmm. that whereas Elijah ran away from Jezebel, yes. Elisha killed Jezebel using Jehu, whom he anointed yes. as instructed of God. Yes. Um, should we read it? I don't think it's necessary. Yes. Um, no. Yes. Okay. Let's just read verse 6, chapter 9. Yes. Verse 6. To, and, to verse 7. And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, and I may, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord, at the hand of Jezebel. Verse 10. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he, and he opened the door and fled. Now, those who want to know how Jezebel died, you can read verse 30 to verse 37. Yes. Same chapter, 2 Kings 9. So, but if you want to remember again the death of Jezebel was also Elijah's assignment. Yes. You still remember that? Yes. Brother Nelson? Yes. Um, 
if you go to chapter 19, first Kings, verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, it is Elijah, yes. go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Azel to be king over Israel, yes. over Syria, over Syria. Yes. and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, yes. shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. Yes. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel-Mehola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Yes. And it shall come to pass that him that escapes the sword of Azael yes. shall Jehu slay. Yes. And him that escapes from the sword of Jehu yes. shall Elisha slay. Yes. So if Elijah had anointed Jehu, yes. it means Elijah would have killed Jezebel. Yes. yes. But Elijah ran away from Jezebel. Yes. yes. That's why he never anointed Jehu. Yes. It was Elisha who anointed Jehu yes. to be king in place of Jehoram. Yes. The son of Jezebel. Yes. And it was Jehu who killed Jezebel. Yes. yes. But when did Elijah run away? When Jezebel sent a word. <laughs> The Bible says Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, yes. So let the gods do to me and more also. If I make not thy life yes. as the life of one of them by tomorrow about mm -hmm. this time. Yes. yes. Elijah had slain the prophets of Jezebel. Yes. And Jezebel is sending a messenger to Elijah. I will slay you. Just as you slew yes. my servants, yes. my prophets, yes. on Mount Carmel. Yes. So, Elijah is the one that was going to come yes. and not Elisha. Yes. The book of Malachi chapter 3 does not talk about the coming again of Elisha. Yes. It talks about the coming again of Elijah. Yes. Verse 1 says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Yes. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Yes. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Yes. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. Yes. Chapter 4, verse 5 says, Behold, uh, yes. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. yes. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Yes. So Jezebel is the wife of the king that runs the country where Elijah was doing his ministry. Yes. yes. Jezebel is a wicked queen who has married a wicked king. Yes. Unfortunately, Elijah's ministry is running in that time yes. of the wicked king and his wicked queen. Yes. Let's find out. Now, when John is born, he is coming in the spirit of Elijah. Yes. yes. According to Luke chapter 1 verse 17. Let us find out how John died. Because we now know John is the Elijah that Malachi prophesied was to come. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Matthew 14, verse number 1. At, At that place. time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus yes. and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Yes. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have a head. Let's wait there a little bit. Yes. What conflict did Elijah have with the palace? Elijah's conflict with the Samaritan palace was Jezebel and not Ahab. Yes. Everything that was wrong <laughs> in the palace yes. was it was all the works of an evil queen yes the death of the prophets according to the scripture we read yes. it was Jezebel yes 
the death of Naboth, it was Jezebel. Yes. The bringing in of Baalism, it was Jezebel. Yes. So, Jezebel had a fight with Elijah. <laughs> Elijah was afraid. Elijah ran away. Yes. But now we are in the <laughs> days of Herod, who is as, as wicked as Ahab was. Yes. But not as wicked as his wife Herodias. Yes. <laughs> so Herod was instructed by his wife yes. to arrest John. Why was John arrested? <laughs> Matthew 14 says, verse 3, for, for Herod, Herod, yes. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake. His brother Philip is one. Pastor. Herod had no intention to arrest. Herod had no intention of arresting John. Yes. yes. Herod, just like Ahab, he was controlled by the queen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Brother Nelson? Yes. Daka. Rangaripo. Remember, Herod was promoted to be a king in those days? Yes. That's why Pilate was not as powerful as Herod was. Yes. <laughs> Elijah, Angas na daka na ab. Yes. Ah, baito taka nisa na Elijah. Awe ozomanga na kuna mai. Palace ya Israel yangu wa e matriaka o palace. Yes. <laughs> Dogo wa John apari zashit iwe wazogera kumvu mwa kuchai chai. <laughs> Dogo mali zaga pari zvana ni na John. <laughs> <laughs> Herodias was not Herod's wife. Herodias was Philip's wife. Yes. Philip was the brother of Herod. But unlike Herod, Philip was not a governor. Yes. So Herod used the political power to snatch his brother's wife. Yes. And John <coughs> rebuked Herodias yes. for leaving her husband Philip. <laughs> and starting to live with the road. Yes. And Herodias was not happy. And Herodias said to Herod, bring him in, stupid man. <laughs> Why can't he leave us alone? We are enjoying ourselves. <laughs> Can you see the comparison? Yes. <laughs> Unlike Elijah who ran away, John did not. Yes. For one reason. For one reason. You shall see it very soon. But of course, we see that indeed, because of this setup, John is indeed Elijah. Yes. Masona. Yes. The Elijah Chai Chai. Yes. Elijah and Ishuna Mai. John and Ishuna Mai. Marinja John Yaga Ipai. Aina Guipa. Munuga to Girkumurumo Age Chai. So my time is to tell them that you come. So I It's an evangelical message. Yes. It's rebuking sin. But those who are in political offices, <coughs> they don't like to be rebuked. Yes. That is what Elijah did. <laughs> Elijah rebuked the palace of Ahab. Yes. You are killing God's prophets. It is not good. You have killed Naboth. Oh. It is not good. Yes. Yes. You have desecrated the holy temple. It is not good. Yes. For that reason, Elijah's head was sought for by Jezebel. Yes. Yes. So the manifestation of John's ministry, it is coming to cover a debt that Elijah's ministry did not pay. <laughs> Elijah left yes. by a whirlwind <coughs> into heaven. But there was a death sentence for Elijah before he disappeared. Yes. If John is indeed the true Elijah, yes. then John must go through, the, he must be the executor yes. of Elijah's punishment. Yes. But who must bring John into this death? It is to be a woman. Yes. Which is not just a woman. She should be a queen. Yes. Because Elijah's ministry is a dispute with the queen. Yes. And since Elijah's ministry is inferior, it cannot destroy the queen. Yes. That's why John did not destroy the wife of Herod. Yes. Because he was not that powerful. Remember, a woman represents a church. Yes. 
Elisha being a type of Christ, he was going to defeat the church of the Antichrist. Yes. But Elijah representing the Old Testament could not defeat Judaism or yes. any religion. Yes. Because it had it its own weaknesses. <coughs> yes. It was not even a true way of worship itself. Yes. I think that's clear. Herodias was the reason why John was arrested. Yes. John had no issues with the king, but the king was less powerful than the queen. <laughs> so he had to oblige. Yes. Verse number five. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitudes, the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John, uh, John Baptist's head in a charger. In a plate. In a plate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the king was sorry. The king was regretful. Yes. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it, it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. Let's end there. The king was sorry. I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> but I, this woman, plus I'm a king, I'm not allowed to make a promise and not fulfill it. All these visitors are going to think that I'm a weak king. <laughs> But I want to remind you, brethren, lest you forget, that verse number 6 says, It was Herod's birthday, but the one who danced was Herodias, Herod's, uh, Herodias' daughter. Yes. What it means is, this daughter which danced is not a blood daughter of Herod. Yes. She is a stepdaughter to Herod. Yes. Which she brought from her earlier husband, an earlier marriage with Philip. She brought her daughter <laughs> to this new marriage. Yes. Mwanakatamba asi mwana wa Herod. Mwanakatamba mwana wa Herodias. Yes. Kure wa kuti msikana uyu mubvandiri po. Yes. Ndokusaka pa akanga apedza kutamba. Ana kufunza baba kuti chicha munga de kundipa. Yes. Aka no funza mai. Kutika andata amba ndopu wei. Yes. She trusted the mother that she trusted this man. Yes. So John's head was brought to, Je to, to Jezebel in brackets to Herodias in a charger. Yes. Because what Jezebel had said in 1 Kings 19, the gods must punish me. If I don't do to you what you did to my prophets yes. by this time tomorrow, when he slew the 450 prophets of, of Baal, yes. Elijah was trying to defeat sin. This is where his death sentence was pronounced. Yes. How was John's death sentence pronounced? Was rebuking sin. When he was trying to rebuke sin, yes. <laughs> he tried to defeat sin. Yes. It costed him his life. Yes. <laughs> so many issues are at play. Yes. Jezebel was a daughter of Sidon, in as much as Herodias was an Italian woman. Yes. These women were Gentiles. Yes. John and Elijah are Jews. The law under which testament they functioned yes. does not allow them to preach repentance to the Gentiles. <laughs> that is a duty of the New Testament ministers. Yes. John was not a New Testament minister, and neither was Elijah. Yes. When they attempted to preach to the Gentiles, it costed them their life. Yes. Talk about a bloody husband. Why was God attempting to kill Moses? If you still remember the message. Buku. <laughs> <laughs> Moza and it was not we anga kutrayakun zazipora kwa jude. Yes. Aga pozafa. Yes. Zino ura isaish. So kuti varimumura hero vade kupone sava eden. Yes. Zino ura isa. Yes. Elijah could not have succeeded in challenging 
Jezebel. Yes. Because Elijah is an Old Testament prophet. Jezebel as a gentile woman, she represents the gentile church. Yes. Baalism is idolatry. It was going to be defeated by Paul, who was now in the New Testament. When he came into Ephesus, he challenged Diana and Paul did not die. When he came to Greece, he challenged the mass gods. Yes. And those who worshipped at Aeropagus, he never died. Yes. When he went to Lystra, he challenged Mercury and Jupiter. Yes. And he told them vanity. They never killed him. Yes. It was because Paul was a New Testament preacher. Yes. He could challenge idolatry. John was not meant to do that. Yes. It costed his, his life as well as Elijah. Yes. If Elijah was not disappeared by God from the earth, he could have uh, uh, finished uh, his ministry with his head on the charger, yes. just like what John went through. Yes. So John's <coughs> ministry starts with a debt to be paid already. <laughs> Kanauru Elijah, welcome. Panesh Gwere, talk bata, talk bata. Muri dwa zaini mendi yagata ngana ya wapinda. Yes. Ano fani wakuva. Yes. Ano rai wana queen. Achora wana we idolatry. Ane ga pari zaga genesty. Ni zaju zaga itwa udara. Iwe we kano kanzo kache njira say. Yes. Uchango komita the same mistake. Uchango first still. Yes. Now. Let's leave it like that. Now that we know that Elijah's ministry was inferior to Elisha's ministry, among other reasons why we taught that, yes. was that Elijah failed to defeat Jezebel. Yes. But Elijah man Elisha managed to defeat Jezebel. Yes. Herodias is a queen whether she is the wife of a governor or the wife of a king, they, she still remains a queen. Yes. She was more powerful. When she faces a forerunner, she is victorious. Let us look at how our Lord died, Matthew 27, verse number 19. Yes. So let's, 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 let's look at verse 17 and going downwards. Yes. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will, you th whom will you that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ? Yes. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Yes. When he was set down. Pilate sat down to oh. judge Jesus matter. On the judgment seat. Yes. His wife sent unto him, you saying. You see now. Yes. Why is it that each time there is this salvation plan, <laughs> the queen is involved? Yes. <laughs> Elijah ran away from the queen. Yes. Her name was Jezebel. Yes. John was beheaded because of the queen. <laughs> Her name was Rodias. Yes. It's now time for Jesus to die. Now, remember, <laughs> Jezebel sent messengers. Yes. To, jo to Elijah. Yes. You remember? Yes. When John rebuked Herodias, they sent men to go and arrest John. Yes. From the queen. Yes. Now Jesus is on trial. Let's read again verse 19. When he was set down on the judgment seat. When Pilate was set down on the judgment seat. His wife sent unto him. The saying, queen wife of Pilate sent a message to Pilate. Yes. The governor. If thou nothing to do with that just man. This queen is different. <laughs> this queen says this man is just. Yes. Yes. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Let's end there. Yes. This man is righteous. Make sure your hands are clean. <laughs> <coughs> so we have two governors. Yes. Herod is instructed to commit evil against John. Yes. But Pilate is instructed. <laughs> what is Pilate instructed to do? He's instructed not to uh, have anything to do with this man. Ah. Yes. He's instructed All right. to do nothing. <laughs> 
Verse number 24, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, yes. but rather a timeout was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, yes. saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Yes. See ye to, to it. it. Yes. Because of Pilate's wife, Pilate declared Jesus a just man. Yes. He said, I am not going to be involved yes. in the death of this man. <laughs> Whatever you are going to do to this man, yes. I am not involved. <clears throat> but that is different from how John died. Yes. There is a conspiracy to kill John. It is starting from the house of the queen or yes. from the mouth of the queen. Yes. But there is a, a, an agreement to exonerate Jesus. Yes. It is also starting from the office of, of the queen. queen. Yes. yes. <laughs> what does this prove? It proves what John was saying in John chapter 1, verse number 30. Yes. John yes. said what? This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Yes. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. yes. This man is preferred before me. Yes. I want us to highlight <clears throat> that part. Yes. This man is preferred before, before me. me. Yes. yes. And it? Yes. So. <laughs> On another verse, in verse 27, he said, he, It is who coming after me is preferred before me. Yes. yes. Whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. Yes. yes. Are you still here? Yes. <laughs> Two verses in the same chapter. Yes. Jesus is better than me. Jesus is more preferred. Yes. People like him more than they like me. Yes. Pastor, <laughs> do you see that? Yes. Being fulfilled. Yes. In the how they died. The manner in which they both died. Mm -hmm. And now the preference have uh, been explained more in terms of uh, the salvation plan. Yes. John must be eliminated. Yes. For the salvation to come. So Christ was to be preferred more than John. Yes. yes. But when we look at these two women. Yes. The queen in Herod's palace. Yes. And the queen in Pilate's palace. Yes. We see that the queen in the matter of John. Yes. The queen did not like John a little bit. Yes. The queen did not respect John a little bit. Yes. The queen did not regard John as a man of God a little bit. Yes. She was not hesitant to request or to demand yes. for John's head. Yes. But in the manner of the trial of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. The queen was there. The queen sent her husband, a message yes. to warn him <laughs> the man you are going to put on trial yes. is a righteous man. Yes. Angels troubled me the whole night concerning this man. <laughs> Which means as far as these queens are concerned, yes. just like John was emphasizing, yes. Jesus was more preferred <laughs> than John. Yes. Kuti unoya shule kwangu uno dikanwa kudarika ini. Yes. Zabuda nenzire yavaka endliwa nema queen same time. Yes. Queen Herodias wakati mgure msoro rabi shemun. Daya nye echo yenge nye kwa yo beta. Kazu yanga etori mombre sajese be. Yes. Mombre. Agati zamurumu wake Filipu. Au karana erod. Chona kangoti. Sinzi mavesa choni cha ziva. Chona ajivati. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Ajipari zira miyendeni. Chona zimbate. Yes. 
Isha chuya uzo tongwa na pirato. Kwini wanga maripo. Yes. Kushikira na mambo. Shaka tauru wana kwini wondoza waka ita. Yes. Wakati ndipe yon vura ni geze maoko. Dashewa makapa murimo. Zuone rei. Andimo maziri. Andidiro opare usina makama uko mangu. So Jesus was preferred by both a, 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 a pilot and the queen, yes. pilot's wife. But John was not in any way respected by the queen. Yes. Who was in charge of this affair? The king had no choice. Herod desired that this daughter had demanded something else yes. other than John's head. And my question to you is, do you really believe you would stand a chance to be the greatest prophet given the details we have showed you so far? <laughs> do you think it's unfair to call John the greatest? <laughs> For the reason, is it unfair? No, it's fair. It's, it, it's, it's according to the Lord because already the door is closed. Because John has come already and he has played his part and now we are in the New Testament. We can't even reverse the time for us to uh, be in the position of John. All right. Um, concerning why they beheaded John, the answer we are going to find is found in uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 19. In First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one and two, yes. Christ is the head. Start from verse eighteen. Let no man beguile you. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourish, nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. All right. Let's, let's not read, um, let's not read the, the first Corinthians 11. Let's read Ephesians 5.22. Christ is the head of the church. Yes. Christ what? is the head of the church. Yes. Yes. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. Yes. Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Yes. So Christ is the head of of the church and yet this church that Christ is a head of was at some time at some point in the hands of John the Baptist yes so for God to prove that John is not the head of this church even though at some point he appeared like he was the head because all Israel came to John for baptism. Yes. All Israel came to John for direction, for yes. spiritual direction. All Israel looked up to John for him to identify the Messiah for her. Yes. Because of that, John looked like he was the head of the church. So the beheading of John is not just because of the Elijah sentence which we mentioned about which Jezebel spoke about in first Kings 19 no it was also because John himself had appeared to be the head of the church yes. and Christ wanted to remove that head yes. so that he could find some way to put his own head yes Matthew chapter 8, verse 19 and 20. Yes. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow you 
<laughs> whithersoever thou goest. Yes. What did Jesus say? And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have walls, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. You see? Yes. Why would Jesus say he has nowhere to lay his head? Foxes have holes. Yes. The birds have <coughs> nests. Yes. But I have nowhere to lay my head. Yes. It was because the church was not yet established. Yes. If the church is the body and Jesus is the head, then Jesus was right. The head cannot have anywhere to be laid if the body is not yet built. Yes. The body was established when he died on the cross. But members of that body were in John's custody. Yes. That's why when Jesus was born, all the two years and under were beheaded. They were killed by a rod. According to Matthew chapter number two, all the children were killed. Yes. Except for John. Yes. Because John were in that same category. Herod was going to kill all those that are two years and below. Yes. John was six months older than Jesus. Yes. Why did God allow all the two years and under to be killed? <laughs> it is because as a Messiah, he doesn't want competition. Yes. He doesn't want anyone to look <laughs> like he is the savior. Yes. So when Herod killed everyone, the only one who was left was John. Yes. But the knife was still wielded. He only had time to finish his assignment and join his compatriots. Who killed John? <laughs> Was it not a road? Who killed the little children? Was it not a road? Yes. So what is new about John's death? <laughs> it's nothing. It was a fulfillment of uh, outstanding <laughs> All right, Matthew chapter 2. Yes. 16. 16. 16. Ah, okay. Yes. Then he wrote, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath, and sent forth and slew, the, oh, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according yes. to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So, verse 16 says, Herod killed all the children yes. who were two years old and below. Yes. How old, what was the age difference between John the Baptist and Jesus? Six months. John was six months older than Jesus. Yes. Which means when Herod killed all the two year olds and below, yes. John was supposed to die. Yes. But God could not have allowed it. Because John had an assignment. Yes. But John was not exempted. Because <laughs> the reason why Herod killed all the two-year-olds yes. still existed. Yes. Whenever a Messiah is born, his agements are annihilated. <laughs> Go and ask the Egyptians. <laughs> Go and ask the Hebrews what happened to the young ones when Moses was born. <laughs> in which case Moses is the only one who was a messiah just like Christ who was a type of what Christ was going to fulfill yes in his time yes ukangoda kuita sekunge une zera na Yesu pane rimwe banga rinofanyira kubaya rinonzira Herod yes so Herod was lazy he forgot that when he killed the two years and under, there was one who escaped. Yes. That's why God <coughs> employed Jezebel so that the job could be concluded. Yes. Let's finish this message. We have to finish it. <laughs> when John received the Holy Spirit, while he was in his mother's womb. It means John was given life because the Holy Spirit is the spirit that quickens. Yes. According to Romans chapter 8, verse number 11. Yes. yes. 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, yes. Yes. he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies yes. by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Yes. yes. At six months old, John was quickened. Yes. But our question today is, if John was quickened, yes. And if Israel is the bride, according to John chapter 3, verse 29, then what kind of a job did John receive from the Lord? <laughs> he was given a job to be a mortuary attendant. Yes. Because he was a living friend of a living bridegroom. Yes. But taking care of a dead bride. Yes. <laughs> Israel was not alive. Yes. <laughs> it was only him who was alive. That's why John chapter 5 describes him as a light. He was a little light and Israel was willing to shine for a season in his light. Yes. <laughs> yes. What yes. kind of a forerunner are you? And that is another way of distinguishing John from the New Testament preacher like Paul in, in for example, yes. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 where he says, I'm jealous over you yes. with a godly Lord jealous Jesus. For I have espoused you to one husband yes. that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Yes. And if you look at First Peter chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible describes us as lively stones. Yes. Yes. Which means we are not just stones, but we are stones that are alive. Yes. But if you look at Colossians 2 13, it says we were dead. In our trespasses. Yes. Which means Israel was dead. Jesus had not yet died for them. They didn't have Holy Spirit, which is the quickening spirit. Yes. So, was John's job easy to keeping a dead church so that when it is time they can be raised to life to become the bride of Christ. Yes. He lived a life of being surrounded by people who are stinking in sin. But because of Holy Spirit, John's steps were ordered by the Lord. He lived a God-fearing life, but he was amongst a perverted generation. Yes. A generation of dead souls which have no life whatsoever in them. How difficult was that job? When you are speaking a language that you are sure, no one can hear that language. Yes. There is no way they could have believed John's message. Yes. Because according to Matthew, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in order for people to understand the things of the Spirit of God, yes. they need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Israel did not have Holy Spirit. Yes. Only John had the Holy Spirit. Yes. How would God send a man with the Holy Spirit to preach to a nation without the Holy Spirit? <laughs> what kind of a forerunner was he? <laughs> My question to you, maybe Pastor Baloy shall answer this in the review. Did it ever happen before? Couldn't it happen before? So John, when John was introducing Christ to Israel, have you ever asked yourself why when he said, Behold the Lamb of God, 
that it takes away the sin of the world. Have you ever asked yourself why the Bible does not tell us the reaction of Israel to that message? If John was telling them, his coming is here, I shall show him to you very soon. He's standing among you. You don't know him. I don't know him myself. If he told them, I'm baptizing you because I'm waiting for him to come. Then the day Jesus came to the river and said, this is the Lamb of God. Then the Bible should have told, told, told us. Mm -hmm. The whole city became an uproar, a frenzy of happiness and excitement. Mm -hmm. The man that John was promising has finally come. There is no such comment. Yes. As you shall see when we launch part four, soon after mentioning the minister of John, Apostle John said, Jesus then went to appoint apostles who were going to work with him. Mm -hmm. Israel, we are we are engaging the inini in the gawo ya kutindi goku prepare i move a people ready for the Lord. Yes. The Lord whom <coughs> John was making them ready for finally came. Yes. And Israel never appeared to have been ready for Jesus. Yes. If John had succeeded in making them ready for Jesus, how come they are the ones who killed him? Is that what ready people do? <laughs> to receive their savior. Imagine you are telling certain women, your husbands are coming. Mm -hmm. And when the men arrive, they, they yield their exes, they want to kill the men. But you promised me you are ready. Is this what a red woman does? Why did Israel kill Jesus on the cross if John had succeeded in making them ready for him? If the answer is no, it means Israel was not ready for Jesus. Then the other question is, did John fail his assignment? <laughs> because if John failed his assignment, then John is not the greatest. <laughs> is John the greatest? John is the greatest. Yes. <laughs> was Israel ready for the Messiah? No, Israel was not ready for the Messiah. The question is why? The answer is there. It was a dead church. Yes. <laughs> so in essence, John's job was not to make the church ready. John was a symmetry security guard. Mm -hmm. That was his <laughs> job. <laughs> when Jesus asked in John 11, where have you laid him? The Lazarus sisters said, come and see. Yes. That was John's job. That's John. Yes. <laughs> 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 Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> it's verse 34. Yes. And yes. Jesus said, Where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that was the only reason why John was there. John was supposed to lead Christ to where the dead laid. Yes. <laughs> It happened to, in Mark chapter 5. Jairus also did the same. Mm -hmm. Ah. Verse 35. Yes. While he had spake, mm -hmm. they came from the ruler of the synagogue's house. Satan, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Yes. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said that to the rule of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Mm -hmm. Ah. Mm -hmm. So this is it. If you read it up to the end, John raised, Jesus our Lord raised this daughter of Jairus 
by saying talita kumi, which means daughter arise. Yes. But Jesus had to go. Jaira said only came <laughs> to lead Jesus where the dead lay. <laughs> Success ya John Apana chimwe cha yakanga yaka Miri wakuti ite Kunze kwa kuti zizi za isu Vemu New Testament Kuti Jesu ndia akanga Porofit kwa kare Kuti anuya Israel Did not see John's assignment Is important Israel did not believe. Father Nelson. Yes, ma'am. And, and Pastor, you were talking about the, the, the lack of miracles in John's ministry. Yes. yes. In uh, John chapter 11. Yes. Chapter 10, verse, in, 13, verse 13, 9 to 14. Chapter 10, yes. 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 Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand, and went again, and went away, went again. away, uh, went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. So John did miracles, but people have their own version of miracles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to say John did no miracle is not true. Yes. <coughs> if he was able to identify Christ, that is the greatest miracles of them all. Yes. John showed them the Messiah who gives eternal life who forgives the sins, who leads the people to, to heaven, in what way is that not a miracle? Yes. People wanted a miracle of bread. People wanted a miracle of receiving healing on their mortal bodies which are going to die. That's not what the word miracle refers to. Yes. But our last scripture is Matthew 21, verse number 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him mm -hmm. as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? Yes. Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I also, and, okay, which if you tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Yes. The baptism of John, <laughs> whence was it? Yes. From heaven. <laughs> or of men <laughs> and they reasoned with themselves saying if we shall say from heaven he will say unto us why did you then why did you not then believe him yes but if we shall say of men we fear the people for all hold John as a prophet and they answered Jesus and said we cannot tell <laughs> <laughs> and he said unto them uh -huh. neither tell I you by what authority I do these things Yes, this was a conspiracy pastor yes. they didn't want to discuss the gospel they just wanted to find an occasion to put him into trouble yes. they asked him by what authority do you do your work who gave you this authority? Yes. His question was, 
Well, I will answer your question if you answer mine. Yes. The baptism of John, where was it from? Was it from heaven? Or it was of men? Then they, they said, we'll, talk, we'll come back to you. Let's do a caucus meeting. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, this man is very cunning. Yes. If we say it was from heaven, then he shall ask us, why then did you not believe in John? And if we say it is of men, these people will kill us. Yes. They believe John was a prophet. So what should we say? He wants an answer now. They said, let us answer him and say, we don't know. Yes. So they came to our Lord and they said, we don't know uh -huh. whether the baptism of John was of heaven or of men. We yes. don't know. Yes. And then he says, neither will I tell you by why, what authority I do these things. Yes. So from this passage, we learn two conclusive things. Issue number one. Issue number one is that Israel did not believe in John. Yes. Because they concluded themselves if we say John's baptism was from heaven, he shall ask us why then we did not believe in John. Yes. Which means Israel did not believe in John. Yes. The second issue we learn from this encounter is that the relevance of learning John the Baptist's ministry yes is in us establishing if we know the authority of John's baptism, yes. that is our hint to the authority of our Lord's ministry. Yes. They were asking about his source of authority. Yes. And he then said, in order for you to understand my authority and the source of my authority, mm -hmm. We have to talk first about John's baptism. Mm -hmm. Brother Nelson, you understand? Yes. So all these sermons from part 3A to part 3G, we looked like we were focusing on John the Baptist. But John's baptism is our lead to understanding Christ. Yes. Pastor Mashona. Yes. Kanamavunza uti indaka tumanani. Mufunzo wangu kwa muri ndewe kuti. John anga akatuma nani. Muka ziva anga akatuma John. Ajuku nete. Kuziva akatuma ini. Yes. Nekuti John na ita orane shanguka. <coughs> yes. Saka kana John haka ita true. Ina andi kwenye kuita fake. Yes. Kana John haka ita fake. Ina andi kwenye kuita true. Yes. Muruko ona connection yacho. Yes. If John's message was false. Jesus is false. Yes. If John's message was true, mm -hmm. Jesus cannot be false. Yes. Because John's message was Jesus Christ. Yes. So, in other words, you are saying also that we want to establish the authenticity of John <coughs> as a witness to Christ. Yes, as a witness. Mm -hmm. Yes. As a witness and as an, as an introduction yes. to the ministry of Christ. Yes. John the Baptist is the introduction to the ministry of Christ. Yes. If you are going to write a book called The Ministry of Jesus Christ, your introduction is supposed to be titled John the Baptist. Yes. Pastor, do you have anything to say? We have come to the climax of <laughs> the John message. I think we have handled John the Baptist well. We tried to tie loose ends and to show people some fundamental matters yes. that we are end picking from the floor of the scriptures. Yeah, we've learned quite a number of things, Apostle. But I was just comparing uh, what we have just read in, in Matthew chapter 21 and what we read in John chapter 10. Was if you look at verse 41, when the uh, people of Israel concluded that all things 
the part B of uh, verse number 41 of John chapter 10. But all things that John spake of this man were true. Yes. Then yes. verse 2, verse 42. And many believed on him there. You see now. So that is what you were saying. Because yes. if we then believe who sent John. Yes. We look at his witness like what Brother Nelson was saying. Yes. If the witness was true. Yes. Then we are bound to believe on Christ. Yes. Because yes. John was testifying on Christ. Yes. 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 Like that scripture we say that all men through him, that yeah. all men through him should believe uh, in yes. first John chapter one. Yes. In John chapter in, one. In John chapter one, yes. verse number six. Six, yes, yes. Six to eight. Yes. All men were supposed to believe in Christ yes. through John's testimony. Yes. And also just uh, commenting on the uh, this which we have now been taught on uh, uh, the authority. Uh, we, we can also add uh, when Apostle Paul also preached in Acts chapter 13 and uh, Apostle, John is, uh, Apostle Peter as well in Acts chapter 10, they all started with referring to the authority, to the baptism of John. Yes, 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 yes. When Apostle Peter preached in Acts 10, yes, from verse 36, yes, he, he couldn't introduce his message, yes, without talking about John, yes, yes, because we said conclusively, yes, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ is introduced by John. Yes. John himself is the introduction, yes. Let's just read it up to verse 39 quickly. Acts 10, 36 39. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, in brackets, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Let's end there. I don't think it's necessary to continue. Yes. yes. You, you, we, Brother Nelson's point is, is clear. Yes. Brother Nelson's point is clear. He could not introduce John yes. Yes. without including he could not introduce the Lord yes. without passing through John the Baptist. Yes. yes. Even Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 13, yes. verse number 16. Yes. He spoke then, the same way. Yes. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said. Men of Israel, and you that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they, were, when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and, in an high, and with an high arm brought, them, brought he them out of it. Verse 24. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. 25. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think you that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose, shoe, whose shoes of his feet I am not worth to lose. Now, let's end yes. there. So in both circumstances, the apostles could not introduce the yes. Lord's ministry yes. without first talking about John. Yes. John was the first point. Yes. That's how important he is. Yes. Anyone who says he knows Jesus must know John enough. Yes. Do you think, brethren, you have learned enough about John the Baptist? <laughs> For the lesson. <laughs> I think we are now going to start on part four. Yes, uh, still uh, there are a lot of things that we need to discuss again, even from this which we have learned today. Yeah, there are still things which I think we need to chew as a church as well, maybe to break from it and learn more. And learn more. Yes. We thank God for you, brethren. I hope you are happy. You were concluding the ministry of John the Baptist. Share among yourselves what exciting things you have learned. 
we hope when we do the review on Wednesday, you would have created time to listen to this message again. It's important. It enables you to follow. It enables you to recall because some of the things we have already taught, what you have already forgotten. So, but it's exciting. What are the lessons that we have learned? We spoke about not measuring ourselves among ourselves. Yes. Not allowing us to be measured by the worldly yardstick. The values of this world are corrupted. We cannot be weighed on an, on an uneven balance. Yes. It's an abomination unto the Lord. Yes. The way the world looked at John and the way God looked at him are different. Let us be weaned from expecting validation from men. Most of them are like the people of Israel. A great prophet was sent among them. Yes. When they looked at him using carnal eyes, they concluded that he was possessed with demons. But he was the greatest, and he still is the greatest. Yes. The fashion of this world is passing. Some of the people who were given greatness on earth, the people who gave them that greatness are dead. Yes. <clears throat> what happened to such greatness? Some of the people who we, regret, we regarded as great, they died together with those who gave them such greatness. Yes. The world is still running without those great people. Yes. We should not seek to be evaluated by a worldly standard. We shall receive an incorruptible crown upon the coming of the Lord. We shall receive different magnitudes of glory. Because the glory of one star differs from the glory of another star. As we serve God in the house, yes. do not follow what other believers are doing. Yes. Because you are waiting for a, cor a crown <laughs> that shall have a different glory. Yes. If you are serving in any office, in any ministry, in any administration, yes. serve with a personalized approach, a personalized focus. I am saving God for my own crown. Yes. I am saving God for my own glory. When others drag their feet, I will not follow them. Yes. Because I now know. When we are invited into the guest chamber, yes. we are going to be given different allocations of where to sit. There are going to be more honorable guests yes. in that room. Kune wangu wakashi gaza pane mangu machea. Wangu wacha zisimu kaya mende kumashure. Wangu wacha to zisimu kaya mbude panzi. Antiduto kona imuno. Asinasi ndova gere pashi garo. Shiri kumperi. Shaka kuirira. Kara hako kumashure mdikani. Yes. Usacha jekwe nda kumperi. He's coming. The inviting authority is coming. The commissioner is coming. Yes. The high priest is coming. The chief shepherd is coming. Where exactly you shall sit in heaven? Don't fight. Don't jostle. Don't push. Yes. Don't shove. You shall receive an uncontested seat. Yes. And if somebody is claiming that seat today, don't worry. <laughs> According to Luke 14, Acha simu zikuwa kana nguwea chia kwana. Yes. Musiyo yu makuwele. Kuni wangu wa rukunzi ma ewe da ishe eshi. Wacha nzi simu kai. Amuna po perumaketa ewe da. Kwa gazi wa sinna kumbo. Apo yu ndi kwa kunzi ndiye ewe da. Uyindi angari ewe da. Akuna ewe da kade. Uyindi ewe da kupu kwewe. 
Rogar was Zero. Avanza. Mamma, do you go to the other? Mamma, I'm going to go to the other. 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 I'm going to go to Sharu kwa kana huya, di ya chatao ra utwa no garawa no garepi. Yes. Asi sofa pana chume chigaro chato ne muri ziku dar. Yes. Ijo chonde cha John. Yes. Achina kunzi chicha pua moonu kana iya huya, cha John ni chaka to pua kare. Yes. Achia apana chicha itu kwa iba. Ha, to pa me Jesus kana huya, to pa ticha zona nenda kudenga utindian. Kumba fire or rota esku zote kero yaka tu enda kaya yaku zondu kwenye odenga i. Kuna zote kana oriwe president zime nyayo no kuna do zono zaina mapi baadhi kwa ndaa kwa office. Zime kuna tu orodi pamberi pamoja na ujio daudi tazwakat. Yes. Ne paruno zosaini wa leta muna nenga tu pua basa kuda. Yes. Kuandini president do funzo wana. We hope you have been uh, blessed. Let's remember the announcements. We are going to do our baptism from the 1st of December. I've been told that it has been extended up to the 6th um, in, in the Middle East and Asia Pacific region. Uh, 1 December to 6 December, we are going to be in Dubai doing our baptism. Those who are in the Middle East region or in Asia, contact our Middle East details on the screen. Our leaders, they are going to help you with our logistical arrangements. We have heard um, from various uh, believers all over the place that others are going to fly from as far as USA, Europe, to go to Dubai for baptism. So if you want to go there for baptism, even if you are in another continent, you can still contact our leaders there. They will organize accommodation for you. Don't just book accommodation without speaking to the leadership that is in the region. We did baptism in South Africa. About 900 believers were baptized. We are now going into the Middle East. From there, we are going to see where the Lord will help us to go. We plan on doing Europe baptism, Australia baptism, USA, Canada baptism very soon. So if you can't afford or if you can't manage to go there for baptism, but if you are in these other continents, hang in there, hold on, we are coming. Uh, we have assemblies already in those places, so there's nothing impossible. We have functional registered assemblies in Europe, in USA, in Australia. Yes. So we are not a stranger there. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank God for you. The other announcement which I'm reminding you about is the building project. Those who are involved, make sure you speak to your leaders to settle down your accounts. And don't forget the assignment day. Yes. It's officially done on the 9th of December. But because it's going to be a midweek day, we are going to do it on Saturday the 11th. So make sure you join us in celebrating this assignment. It's bye for now. The scriptures say one must repent and be baptized in the water and in the Holy Spirit for them to truly become born again to become a child of God and to receive forgiveness of sins. After hearing Peter's message in Acts chapter 2, verse 37 says, They were pricked in their heart, and they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
I am inviting anyone who has been pricked in their heart to believe that the message we are preaching is true and that you need the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins and that you need to be born again. After hearing the word, the next stage is repentance. Repentance is a conviction that you are a sinner followed by a confession to salvation as instructed in Romans chapter 10, verse number 9 and verse number 10. The scripture in that scripture is very clear that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Because I am a minister of the gospel, I shall guide you in doing this confession. Follow this confession after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I confess believing fully with my heart that you are the Son of the living God. I am a sinner and I depend on you for my salvation because you died for me and you were raised from the dead after three days by the glory of the Father. May you forever be glorified. What you have just done is a confession to salvation and that means you have repented. What is outstanding is baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Contact us through our original contact details appearing on the screen. We have assemblies all over the world, in all of the continents, and our leaders shall connect you with our assemblies where you shall be told and furnished with information of our baptism programs. If you are based in Zimbabwe, contact our Zimbabwe numbers and our leadership, our administrators, shall notify you of our baptism dates. Make sure you prioritize your baptism. It is the most urgent thing that you must give priority to as soon as possible. Because the Bible tells us in Romans 8 verse 14, that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What you have done, the repentance and the confession to salvation, does not make you a son of God. You become a fully regenerated child of God after receiving Holy Spirit, which is too outstanding. You will need to go through baptism of water, and then baptism of Holy Spirit for you to actually become a fully functional child of God. Welcome to the kingdom. We hope you are going to enjoy your new life in Christ. Mm -hmm.